But I just want to be that clear for a clunker. <laughs> well, I'm just Order really constituted. Round table we worked really well. It was really simple. CCMs. Um, hashtag CCM. Um, so it took out the hierarchy. <laughs> no, oh no, wait, not Qu no QCM. <laughs> Thanks, guys. For yeah. um, okay, so just to be clear, though, for anyone who, or for me, and for anyone else who might be listening in or watching, this is separate from what we're already doing jointly as a town council and a school board for the budget outreach. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, um, I mean, we can do that first. I had just, I just wanted to quickly hear everybody's perspective on what, like, any joint objectives or goals we might have um, as, as two different teams kind of working together on stuff. Um, we've, this is our first ever joint communications meeting. We've had joint finance meetings in the past, um, but we've never done joint communication. Um, so I just kind of wanted to, and I can take notes too, um, and anyone can jump in and just kind of, like, what are our objectives for being joint and... Is that in Google? No. I can put it in Google. Okay. Just I'll put it in Google after I take the notes, because if I do it now, then I won't go to Okay. So anybody? Want yeah. me to start? <coughs> start. Okay. I'll start just because I think in part the this is brought around because the communications committee of the town council two years ago um, did a little experiment in terms of trying these what we called we just called them roundtables. So it was just an open mm -hmm. forum where there was actually no formatting or structure at all. Honestly, it was really come in and tell us what you're thinking about anything that you want to. Now the topics did end up um, a lot of times getting steered towards you know, whatever was happening in town at the time, which at the time was a lot of budget conversations. Um, but it was really our, the communication committee at the time, it was our belief that it, a part of why folks in the community weren't all buying into this one town, one budget concept was that they didn't feel like their voices were being heard. Mm -hmm. um, and we, I know everybody here at this table has heard that um, a million times, and in some ways it's frustrating because we think we're doing the best that we can to hear those voices. And um, for me, what, what I, I think I heard and observed was it's not just about um, being heard from a podium, but being able to have dialogue. And that's what the open forums allowed. Um, there was question and answer and two-way conversation. So it wasn't you know, trying to get everybody to agree or that we were necessarily, again, incorporating all of their ideas, but that there was a, a more open uh, two-way street. And that way, folks when people feel involved, just like our students, right? Mm -hmm. You involve the students, they typically get more engaged. I think the same is true of our community. And so that, for me, was the overarching goal back then. And for me, I think that's what it would be going forward. It's really looking to engage people in a um, more robust way. So can you give us a little bit more background as to what those, like when they were, where they were, how they were attended, Yep. you know, your overall kind of um, So we them. were doing them kind of, I think we held four in that first year. We, we didn't necessarily call them quarterly, but um, it was more of a as needed around um, as topics. Like there was a, <coughs> I think it was beach raking was something that was also very hot at the time. And so one of the meetings Again, we didn't set an agenda saying tonight we're going to talk about this, mm -hmm. um, but we knew that that was a hot topic in town at the time, and so uh, obviously it gave people a place who wanted to talk about that to come and, and voice some concerns and any additional issues that they hadn't been able to raise from the podium or whatnot. Um, so they would, I wouldn't call them monthly and I wouldn't call them quarterly, but there were four that first year. Um, it was literally maybe, you know, the table was twice as long as this. We provided water and snacks. Um, and, and we that was had last year or year before? Two years ago. And we had anywhere from, I think the lowest attendant, attended one was probably 15 people, but one, one we had upwards of 45 people. Mm -hmm. um, which, as you can imagine, as a facilitator without an agenda or a format, that can get, um, and we did have ground rules. You know, so we talked about sharing airtime, the need for mutual respect and civil uh, dialogue, of course. Um, and you know, there were, but it, overall, people really respected the opportunity. Um, 
and while we were discussing a few heated issues, people didn't get, um, it, it was handled well, I thought. So was it only that one year that you did it? Correct. Okay. So last year, the communications committee chair decided that that was not what the purview of that committee was for, mm -hmm. um, and so the, they didn't continue. Okay. So to, to add on, so to talk about broader goals and objectives, which this clearly fits into, I think one of the things that we discussed is communications more than just distributing information for people to receive. And I think my biggest objective is to create opportunities for people to be heard. So I, I think that's almost more important at this point. I think the BOE and the town council have made efforts to streamline the way that information is distributed out to the public. With the staff of the e-newsletter has been phenomenal. You guys combining, streamlining where your information is kind of coming from, excuse me, but for the communication committee, I think my biggest objective is to create opportunities to be heard. And I even, to piggyback on what Katie said, even though it's a hot button issue when people appreciate the opportunity, so to speak, you know, you, it softens the hot button issues and it's easier to talk about them. So piggybacking on that to go back to the broader objective, that's my I think similarly I have I have been looking for an opportunity for us to be able to have a dialogue like Katie was talking about. It's very frustrating on both sides to have people up at the podium and not be able to um, converse. You know, they say what they want to say. We can't, as much as we might want to, we can't um, respond in any way, whether you know, however that might be. Um, and then they sit down and it's like... You know, I used to do it and and leave thinking I didn't. They didn't. They weren't. They weren't even listening to me. You know, and and I'm sure that's not true. But I think it's really important for us to be available to have, or to ha to offer an opportunity to have some of that dialogue, um, and for people to feel like they are heard. We might not agree, but um, for there to be an opportunity there for for some two way a two way street for dialogue and. <coughs> And just feel like you know there's some sort of um, avenue to allow that. And I was just at, so you know, for me it was also it's not trying to you know down degrade what we have. I mean, what we have is there structurally for a reason, and we need to operate under those structures to have a meeting that can f be fluid and run efficiently. But I think for me, this is just a, it adds. <coughs> another alternative. Yeah. Um, and so I, I think I don't think you can ever over communicate or over engage. Um, and I so. think it's increasingly important, right? <coughs> We're living in a world where if you're not up here, maybe you're on Facebook, maybe you're on some social media site, and it's just more. Um, well, at least my opinion is that it's more effective to be face to face. Well, and yeah, I think so I feel like it's even more needed. I think specific speaking specifically to the BOE, one of the things that limits. Uh, people in the community from feeling heard is that for our public comment it's limited to agenda items mm -hmm. and so if people have hot button things or pressing issues or concerns that they would like to bring forward to the BOE there really literally is not a channel to do that in a public forum right now right. we don't it's have email. that opportunity email yeah. or email phone call, or phone call. call right. yeah. do you guys have anything to add I think just being really clear about the purpose so that folks don't come in with um, expectations that might not, you might not be able to deliver on and mm -hmm. reminding them of that as many of you every time you bring the, group, bring the group together so that way everybody's on the same page. Okay. Yeah, I'm certainly not, a, not opposed to it. I applaud the effort. I'm a little uh, confused as to what our role, staff role is, if any, in this. To the extent that we can be helpful, I, I think we want to be. Uh, yeah. The first year through, we really didn't have much involvement at all. That didn't seem to be an issue. Uh, so, just <coughs> want to know what the expectation is going forward. Yeah, and I think that's part of why we're here, right? We want to figure out what those expectations are, what the format's going to look like, right. and then, and you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you won't. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, we'll, we'll figure fine. it out. Let's so, see. yeah. Um, so that's a good point, though. We need, I think we need to be <coughs> clear about what we expect. Oh, well, I will say, um, I know we did our best to take notes. 
and I think Larissa ended up coming to the last couple of them and taking notes, mm -hmm. but the first couple, um, you know, it's hard to facilitate a meeting and take notes at the same time, especially a meeting like that. So just, it, and I don't know that it has to be a staff person, but having a designated person to capture, you know, the essentials of the conversation, I think, is helpful. What did you do with the, what would you do with the notes? I still have them. Can I just, I just <laughs> want to, so we're moving a little bit more into the details now yeah. about what those, this meeting will look like. I just want to make sure everybody has had a chance to, um, I just for objectives. Point out what their objectives or goals might be before we move into that. Go ahead, Sarah. Around her, yeah. um, I just think, you know, outside of opportunities for engagement with the community, I think keeping town council and school board aligned, it's seeming that um, increasingly so now and in the future, a lot of our strategic initiatives in the town and the school are so closely linked that this would be, this is a good opportunity for us to just brief you guys on, hey, here are the, the things that are coming down the pipe for you to do the same to make sure that we're aligned um, sort of what our objectives and um, you know, any changes that are coming out that could affect uh, either town council or vice versa and mm -hmm. making sure our communications are, are aligned in that front. Yeah. Yeah, the only thought I had is, uh, so it's just a toss up for me between uh, you're trying to set agenda topics uh, uh, versus leaving it completely open. So I, I think there, uh, you know, advantages to leaving it unstructured at first, but um, pe people are not really clear about what topics they can broach. It's new for them. Um, uh, it might be helpful for us to give them an idea of what you know what the process is and what. <clears throat> what we hope to accomplish. I like the idea of leaving it open and just seeing that where the energy takes it, but uh, it's hard to predict attendance and engagement. Yeah, so I, I mean, should I say, we did one. open each session with kind of like, why, you know, name, introduce yourself, and, yeah. and what is it that you really wanted to talk about? And then we would try to see if there were common threads, and then, you know, obviously right. tackle those things right. first, because the, if, if the majority of the people were all there to just, you know, for so one you'd have some So we'd have some process. Yeah, but it came, it was really, it was driven by them, which was mm -hmm. the beauty of it. Again, it goes back to that, you know, involve me piece. Like, they got to set the topic. We didn't tell mm -hmm. them we're going to talk about this. Um, we will certainly, I think, have no shortage of ideas of, uh, and things that we know we can talk about. Um, but I, for me, anyway, one of the key objectives was really just shut up and listen. Yeah. Listen to them and give them that opportunity. We, we all get plenty of time to talk. The only thing I'd suggest we might have as a, as a fallback, in the event you, we try to organize uh, the priorities based upon what people want to speak of, if there aren't any, if it's dead silent, then do we have a ready list or is there, you know, some prompts? Uh, maybe we've got a short list of, of, you know, top items that we might offer because that is possible to get people to come and I, I would be surprised if people came without without something to say. Mm -hmm. I mean, I see your point, but I I, I would be surprised. Yeah. I, uh, I, I think people will come probably, uh, hopefully, with their own hot buttons, uh, and yeah. the trick will be to see if that energy is shared or if it's just, you know, mm -hmm. uh, constituent by constituent, yeah. issue by issue. But I'm, I'm pretty comfortable with So I do feel like that's a, that's a discussion that, I mean, that's a decision that we could probably make right now. So I don't know what other people think about. I mean, I, I agree that if you have a format, it lends itself to a maybe more um, focused and, and maybe, I don't know if I'm, maybe not respectful, but at least a more focused meeting and it's easier to facilitate. Um, and yet you don't want to offer them and be like, oh, you can't talk about that because that's kind of what we come up against <coughs> at the school board level when we do our public comments. So um, if it was me, I would probably leave it open and um, like Don was just saying, you know, have a back pocket. I mean, I would be, sh even if nobody came with specific things to talk about, I would be shocked if a discussion couldn't easily be ignited. And that's what we found. Like, there, even if, if there was a, a moment of pause, 
we had a million things to to <coughs> to, to right. fill the space and, and to talk about. And also, you know, the emphasis for me is not just I don't want it to be just hot issues. I want it to be right. gosh, mm-hmm. you got a great idea for you know our our community mm-hmm. has some super creative ideas out there for different initiatives and things that we may not have thought of. Bring Anything that up they to would us. like us to exactly. hear. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So do we feel like that's a decision that we can just leave it as an open? Yeah, yeah and I would say one step further is instead of having a back pocket agenda, so to speak, we should have a list of questions mm-hmm. to ask constituents. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, need, you know we don't idea. need to dictate where it's going. We just, you yeah. know, What's we'll, just, we'll have a, we'll have a, we'll right. a I mean, exactly that. Won't be hard. Yes. What sort of expectation do you guys set um, after the session? So, would you say that we get back to you on certain ideas, or if they brought up concerns, did the conversation end there? Like, what was the follow up? I think that is that where you were going, Tom, with the notes and. Yeah, notes and or if there's an expectation that you want to have folks in the room that can answer most of the questions that might come up, not right. all but most, uh, is that a reasonable expectation? Expectation. Or is there follow-up as required? I, I think there were a few items that came up that we had to, you know, say we'll have to get back to you yep. on if we could answer questions. If we could answer it on the spot because we had the information, we would, obviously. Right. Um, I'm trying to remember. I mean, part, I of, part, of those, that, part of those notes in the conversation helped drive the next session. I do know, I do remember that. So we could see where the energy was. And we would could kind of continue that, um, you know, if that's what people wanted. And we did that with a couple of things. Well, I would I would suggest that we any notes we take, even if they're at like a broad level, just like um, bullet points, would then go up on <coughs> on our web pages. Sure. Um, that way, people have an you know, even if they weren't there, they might have an idea of what um, happened, or they could say, oh you know, I'll go next time because, oh, look, they talked about this or whatever. Um, but I think Tom has a good point, too. Like, are, is the expectation for us to have one of them or both of them there? I mean, that's a big ask. I think that think, during the town, town council time. communication committee meeting, I think we pretty much determined that it would be elected officials only, and then Larissa did offer up her time as a note keeper. Okay. Um, so I don't, as far as, am I remembering this yeah. correctly? Yeah. Right. So I think... Larissa was kind enough to say, hey, I want to go to these anyway, so I'll sit in the back <coughs> and take notes, and if you want to reference me, you can, and if you, can't, if you don't, you don't. So as far as expectations from staff, I think, I don't want to speak for her because she's not here, but I feel like she said, I will be there but not be there, so to speak. So. Well, and I think we could say, if, if Larissa's there and she wants to use her time for that, that's great, and we'll yep, use right. her as the note taker, but I wouldn't ask. Okay. If she's not there, then one of us can I do agree. it. Totally yeah, I, don't, enough, uh, I don't feel comfortable asking her to a million other do that as a commitment. Completely agree. Yep. It's not, um, it's not just that, though. It's really, uh, it may change having staff right. in the room and the conversation yeah. may right. change and may, frankly, right. stifle the, the conversation. Yeah. Yep. And, yep. and uh, we recognize that and don't want to stand in the middle of it. I see this as, as an initiative by the elected officials, yeah. and, yeah. and, and I we think want to do what we can to support, but we yeah. And I think as long as you guys are ready for the email the next morning going, okay, here's my 15 questions I can answer. (laughs) (laughs) Please get back to me. Um, But I didn't, like, when Julie left the room at the budget outreach meeting, you had somewhere else to go. You were there for the most part. And then at the end, I was on my own for, like, 15 minutes. And I literally had four Post-it notes that was, like, I I, I don't And I just said, I don't know the answer to that. Great question. I'll I'll find out and get back to you. I think people are okay with that. Yeah, Mm -hmm. me too. And I think that that's a role we're all comfortable doing. I mean, yeah. I have no problem going back to doing the questions and just saying, I, I don't know, I don't have to ask. I mean, the danger in this, from my perspective, is that you know we're tilting at windmills, that we're chasing mm-hmm. someone's personal crusade, that, yeah. that's not a good use of staff time. But mm-hmm. we'll know that when we're there. I, mean, I just right. flag that as a potential when you open it up for, let's talk about whatever's on your mind. Uh, a simple question can require detailed response sometimes. So just it's, <laughs> it's kind of what I meant through about expectations, and that was much right. more eloquent. But, you know, I think we need to be clear whether we're just hearing or whether we're acting. And, mm-hmm. and just set expectations on... Well, we can't act. Right, so... Right, so I think we, I yeah. think we just need to make that clear in, in terms Absolutely. of what the expectations are of the information that, that we're being right. given. Right. I suspect so much good can come from someone just having a forum to ask the question, right. whether yeah, or not think, the answer is yeah. provided then yeah. or even at a later date. 
or even just somebody say, I hear you. Yeah. Let me, let me find Katie out the answer really that for you. I see out. the value in, in yeah. people want to be having heard. the forum mm -hmm. for that purpose alone. But, but I do think that we need to be crystal clear that we cannot take any action. Like, you know, there might be two board members there, but there's, we can't do any, we can't no. take any action outside of the board. Mm -hmm. So I just want, I feel like that's going to need to be, I mean, you guys can't either, but. Um, yeah, and we can put that right up. Yeah. On a flip chart or whatever okay. we use. Um, I think having some sort of like exit slip or way to gather feedback from folks who do participate might be really helpful because it could either inform, maybe folks after a few times might say, oh, it'd be more attractive if there was a topic or yeah. not, you know. Yeah. Really I wish we idea. had done that actually after <coughs> the office hours when the, legis when the state legislators held it. I wish that we had kind of, as people were grabbing their coats or whatever, just had people fill out, you know, a card to let That's us know idea. how it had gone. Because I had my own thoughts, but right. you know whether or not it was different to be the elected official or versus the constituent, I don't, I don't know. And so but, I would be curious. You know, one one thing you could do is part of your agenda to end with that yeah. to mm -hmm. go like you start with everyone kind of mm -hmm. introducing what are you here, what we'd like to talk about, end up with a quick little run through. Uh, how can we improve the mm -hmm. next session? Mm -hmm. Just as a, another way to get feedback. So as a sample agenda, I'm just. We would basically do like introductions, and then, um, well, elected official introductions, and then I think whoever's in the room would kind of do an introduction and like, why am I here? Type. Is that that's absolutely? Mm -hmm. And then and then really it's discussion, right? And mm -hmm. then at the end we could put something like Tom said, like, um, you know, I don't know what to call it, but um, and then we could also offer exit slips. I mm -hmm. think in addition because. There might be some things people want to write down that they're not comfortable yeah. talking about. I think, no, not you just jarred my memory. I think one of the sessions, I can't remember what it was, but we were looking to get feedback around something. And so we had a pretty good sized group, I think it was 30 to 40 people, and we split them into four groups. And we had, um, you know, four, like a jigsaw, four, <coughs> a jigsaw kind of literacy strategy to pull ideas because we were just, we were actually soliciting their. Mm -hmm. ideas to help with our problem mm -hmm. and people really liked that they didn't come there that night thinking that that's what they were going to be doing but they really enjoyed being a part of that process it might have been related to the public safety building or we were gathering i think it makes sense to have some structure for but, consistency but yeah. then be but depending on that time of year like there might be something coming you know maybe it's you know so you know there's been talk about the scarborough downs and schools and will you know what are their ideas and thoughts about that and, be, and that's, again, I, I think, for me, it gets to that piece of people feeling like they're involved. So one thing we could do is we could decide, you know, if it's 20 or more people, we'll break it up into, you know, groups like one board member, one board member, one town council, one town council member, and people can kind of float between the groups. Um, I mean, we, that's, a, that's an arbitrary number, but just to make it more manageable as opposed to always having like this giant thing where you know by the time five people talk our hour might be over and then so I don't know what what do you guys think about that yeah I think we can wait and do that after the what are you here for potentially yeah. so we could group strategically group people if we need to based on what their topics are okay that may work it may not work if they're all there for the same thing and just kind of divide it on the middle if you have a really big group, you could use like an Ed Camp model, which is where folks would have like a post-it and they would start by just writing what, are their, what they're here for and then you sort of compile the post-its based on similarities and that's how you form groups um, if you end up with like 50 people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I do think you'll have more engagement in, in, smaller, yeah. in smaller groups. And then just circling back to sort of the objective or the goal and thinking, I don't know if this is part of the bigger why, but... Um, you know, would would one of maybe your intended outcomes or your purposes to be, be to build a stronger sense of community or to get to know each other more or to engage with each other as well? Absolutely. Sure. Yes. Right. So I think if you put that out there, if that is part of your why, and you can work on the language of it, but <clears throat> being really clear that this is a community building activity as well mm -hmm. or process. Yeah. I like that. Well, and I think honestly... What might be a good idea is when we introduce this to put some of these objectives right there in our text. Well, I, yeah, one of the things, and we can come back to this if it's not 
right, you know, right now is not the right time. But one of the things I did want to talk about was how we roll this out mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we definitely have a saturation problem in the community where people are confused in some cases or it just goes in one ear and out the other because they have so many other commitments. You know, what makes what we're suggesting now different from the budget outreach and what makes that different from listen to learn and mm -hmm. you know because there are other opportunities that currently exist the legislative open you know office hours and so one thing I would really like to be purposeful about is making sure that when we do launch this we take that into consideration and we we've, we've seen like branding and mm -hmm. you know being really strategic about how we message the community is really important mm -hmm. and so like you know I want to be really thoughtful about how we put this out. I agree. And one of the things we talked about when Paul was at our meeting was that we wouldn't start this until after budget. budget because Thank we you. didn't want to confuse <laughs> the budget outreach yeah. sessions. And that when we do this and when we plan the dates, that you know maybe the budget season is a hiatus. Um, and oh, the dates have already been set. So one of and yeah. the first one, first one, one is yeah. before so, the budget. And okay. by the way, on my counter, it shows this town council roundtable. <laughs> I don't <laughs> so have that. Where did you guys get that? No, it was I asked because I asked Larissa to send me an invite because so I could get it straight yeah. in my calendar. I, don't, yeah. I can send it to you. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, yeah. I have the. Please. I thought you were talking about the dates for the um, budget outreach ones. Those are set. Too. Those are set. I have yeah. those. Those are set, yeah. and we're all assigned. Yeah, okay. I'll, well, I'll give you the 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 the. the First one is scheduled on March 26th. So if that was, so in my opinion, that should not be the first one. Okay. Only because I don't, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea to have cross. I don't want anyone to be confused about the, the purpose first of it. When's the budget outreach meeting? Um, I mean, the budget April outreach 23rd. is different. So it's a month before the, the first budget outreach, though. But it's three, what, a week before, not even, the first, the first reading yeah. of the budget. Yeah, since so, so most likely there will be questions on the budget that yeah, it's a fair point. we can't really answer. Yeah. And I, I don't, I'm cautious that that would set a, sta a precedent for the topic. That this would just be viewed as another opportunity to talk about the budget, which has its, you know, like us offering our time and we're saying we want to talk to the constituents about what they want to talk about, what they want to talk about the I budget. Think I don't really want to be like, no, we I think it was mostly set just to make it quarterly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so well, they were just we're trying talk to about, get, yeah. yeah, branding and messaging. I think one of the things that the drama I've been beating since we started, we should call these things something and quarterly yeah. would be yeah. something that is consistent. Yeah. And so I would my my feelings are that we we go ahead with the twenty six because it's, it's literally the end of the quarter. And we're when my, is the next one? June twenty fifth. Which will be right before the fourth vote on the budget so that could get <laughs> well no but I mean but but there's a there is a <laughs> there's a possibility that are we going to sit around and have this conversation if you know I I, I don't think the budget should dictate what I, we're trying I to can do. see what you're saying I think the other piece is we have an ability to make that that doesn't have to be the whole hour Correct. are Correct. we just doing an hour or are we doing two hours two hours from six okay. to eight so we can say if 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 30 people showed yeah. up and their energy is sure. around the budget we can certainly devote a certain amount of time to it having them understand look it's, it's still evolving so we may not have a lot of these answers but it'd be a way to get some early feedback and then but we're not going to spend the whole two hours on that sure. and we can just we can shift and sh make that happen um but I hear your concern. I'd be fine going. I could go either way. Yeah. But I also think if you, if the idea is to get these branded away from having to be around the budget at all, then the quarterly piece, you know, we still want to have it. And I actually, I think Julie's idea around, because that's that is truly that is exactly why we did it two years ago. We wanted to get people from the various groups in town you know, at the table, meeting yeah. each other, talking to each other face to face, because yeah. we know when we build relationships face to face, yeah. it changes the game altogether. So the, the ones two years ago, they, were they primarily town council? They weren't joint town council board. It was yeah. not, it was, it was just the town council communications committee that ran it. Right. So that, that's, I think how, at least my recollection of how we had started it as a communications committee, a council communications committee, 
and that's how we got them booked on the calendar. And now we are here at our first joint school board town council communications meeting. So we're I'm I'm not opposed to having you know both council and board of ed. Uh, and I see the and understand the concerns about it maybe being too much or you know uh, being predominated by other other budget talk or being just generally a busy season between now and when the budget's voted. So I'm, I'd like to hear what others have to say about that. Uh, you could run, you could run with just council meetings and then have the, you know, the school board uh, come into it after the budget season is done. I, I'm, you know, because I'm, I'm sensitive to the point you've made about the restrictions uh, you have around, uh, you know, talking about specifics and, and even in right. our, in our budget budget meeting or in our communications meetings, you know, not being able to get into a lot of detail in the budget. I mean, that is a concern, but honestly, my bigger concern is that I don't want these tangled. Yeah. Because the budget well. outreach, I thought, you know, it was only been one year that we've done it. Yeah. I felt like it was, I liked, I liked doing it. I thought it was successful. We're doing it again. I don't really want to step on those yeah. toes to, for yeah. a lack of a better yeah. word. And what April said, I mean, people are, you know, it's like you ask them to go to the budget outreach and the town council meeting yeah. and the school board meeting, and it's like, here's yeah. one more thing, and I don't know. I, I'm kind of sticking with I think we're overestimating point. the amount of people that might want to talk about the budget. Yeah. I mean, That's a lot of people want to. Maybe. I mean, because, because our world right now around the table might yeah. revolve around the budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean everybody else's in town's world is revolve around the budget. Um, and so just to push back some more, then we're looking at a six-month period at the beginning of the year that we have not done one of these things. Mm -hmm. these, to me, these are successful if they're consistent. And uh, you actually just, I always try and bring myself back to this lately, which is I don't want us as elected officials to dictate our decisions around what we think the community wants. Mm -hmm. let like, let's us. let them tell us. Yeah. And then, and, and this is what tends to happen is that we, we then say, you know, we get going down a path and we say, oh, well, you know, well, we'll do this and we'll do this and the constituents will like it and, you know, we'll do this. And it's like, well, wait a minute, you guys go all the way back. We got to pull back again because we're making a lot of assumptions about what people want to talk about even and there's no need to do that. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. The success in this is in rollout. Yep. Mm -hmm. I definitely yeah. works yeah. I firmly that. believe that. So you mentioned that they're already on the calendar. Yeah. Just your personal calendars or have they been... No, they've, I believe they've been sent, uh, the invitation's actually been sent to everybody around this table. I could be wrong, so don't, uh, that wasn't meant to be accusatory. So uh, I think just to us, just to Tom Yeah, Carlson. I lied. It's just, it's just us. It's the three of us. Oh, yeah. we, don't yeah. have, we don't have it. Yeah, we yeah. Have. But that means Chambers has been booked. Yeah, everything's been booked. Everything's been set, okay. correct. So i kind of like to hear from Julie and Tom about this, only because you guys are doing the outreach, and how would you feel if we did it at the same time? Do you have an opinion on that? People want to talk about the budget. I think your purpose is served. I mean, that's that's what this is all about, is engaging them right. at the level and the topics that they want to talk about. So I, I don't see the harm in that. Uh, and someone stated earlier, uh, you can't communicate enough. You can't give enough opportunities. And the irony is we might be criticized uh, for having too many opportunities. I mean, that's <laughs> one of the frustrating things about this is uh, we do a darn lot, and you there's a lot of opportunities for people to be engaged. Uh, so... I think it's important we have these conversations and provide the opportunities and I don't think it's a bad thing if budget is what's on their mind. Let's yeah, right. that's mm -hmm. what we should talk about. Okay. I'm overruled. <laughs> and I would just <laughs> echo both what Sarah and April are saying. It I think it is all in how you roll it out and just marketing it and making it something that people find value in, um, see instant value in. And so being really clear about what you're doing, when you're doing it, why you're doing it. And I would say put all four dates and, you know, kind of like challenging mm -hmm. the community. Can you come to at least one of these sessions? You're well, you know, you're invited to all of them, but maybe come to one at least uh, as a way to stay engaged or something like that in your, in your marketing plan. One of the things I've heard from folks, I don't know if they all are intended to be from six to eight, but some of our seniors in town don't like to drive at night. Yeah. And although in the summer months it stays lighter longer, I've been asked about like Saturdays at 10 before um, by some older folks that would prefer that as opposed to later in the evening. Well, we did talk about that. But and I depending don't know. on who's attending each session, like 
April and I are usually available during the day as opposed to at night. Anyway, I mean, we could offer it during the day, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry to speak for you, but that's okay. Our schedules are... I think that's a good idea. I think I'll email Larissa and see if we can get a, one of these guys on Saturday At least morning. one of them yeah, to be on it. Paul, what were the other dates? Do you have those? Yeah, I have them right You know what? I'll form them to everybody. Yeah. Is there any consideration to doing it outside of Chambers? Yeah. We did talk about that, too. Um, see if we can get but I don't know if she actually looked at other... They were all on a Tuesday, March 26th, June 25th, September 24th, and November 19th. What about the... And at this point, all scheduled at... In council chambers, okay. but I would so welcome that idea. We had that meeting you hold them here? before the board, um, I mean, before the election at Wentworth Commons. I felt like a lot more comfortable. It was just a more comfortable atmosphere. I don't know if that's an option. Yeah. I mean, or even even like upstairs at Nonsuch Brewery. <laughs> we can't do that. I just found out we're not allowed. There. Why? If it's a school function, we can't be where they're serving alcohol. Oh, um, am I right? I don't know. I, I just heard that. I was to a restaurant. Like, <laughs> that can be the uh, pre. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's like a pre. Do that later. Over here. Over here. Yeah. <laughs> or okay, or like Scarborough. Or just get the Scarborough string court type back. Well, I feel I think like we have to be careful small. that we yeah. have it in some place that It'll allows for as many people to come as possible. Yeah. Like accessible. Yeah. Like you, we could check. We could look at Martin's Point. See if there's availability there for any yeah. yeah. of these. Like yeah. Um, um, I don't think it's a bad idea to the, just the fire, fix this. The fire station has the... Mm -hmm. I mean, we could do less formal, right? Which is what that's we're what, going that's on. That's what I'm going for. Yeah. That's, 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 what, that's what's in when, my head, too, yeah. When the senior program has the bus that drives them around, is that something we could... Pro like, if we had it at an earlier time, could we provide transportation? You mean, like, the regional transportation? Like, if we had it at Martin's you? Point, like, could we somehow piggyback on the fact that that bus already drives people to Martin's Point? I don't know if I don't let know. them pick up. I don't have yeah, no actually, idea. I don't know if the location of the meeting matters. I mean, we have the bus. Uh, it's just a matter of logistics and paying a driver to pick them up. People oh, okay. have to sign up for it. It's, mm -hmm. it's possible. But I think making sure that you connect with other community groups, because some of the community organizations have they have their own um, yeah. transportation. Yeah. Yeah. So let, let them know. Yeah, paper shores. Well, yeah. If there's That's enough of the residents that want to go to a certain location, they'll certainly yeah. send it yeah. us. Yeah. Does one of us want to reach out to some places like Martin's Point or Camp Ketchum? We we'll have to reach out to some some dates. The Rissa had a venues list, I think. That's something that right. In our last meeting, remember she had a, and everyone wanted to have a, Meetings at the clubhouse at Brown's Neck in the summer. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it's not noticing me. It was on the list. Yeah. That sounds free. <laughs> yeah. Oh, FYI, it has to be free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, these were all. We know that. Yeah, yeah right. no, it was. Yeah. That's right. Well, from what Katie says, we should be thinking a, a venue needs to handle as many as 50 people that has adequate parking. Yeah, I'd be shocked if we get more than so that. But that my, I would, yeah. Your options end yeah. up being fairly limited once okay. you start thinking of just the sheer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. practicality of the location. Right, making, yeah. I mean, I think Martin's Point would be one good option. Um, you Because they have that big that big room. Would Camp Catch a donate, you know? No. I don't no, think, think so. Donate. I think there's they would charge. They would charge your old classmate for this. And Wentworth? I could ask her. Yeah. Morning totally. comments? Yeah. <laughs> Is that a good idea? Yeah, yeah. that's a great space. So what about Wentworth? Their let's, learning comments? Let's find out space. if they're, yeah. That would work for one. The library has a space that can accommodate a fairly large crowd. That's true. So, if so we are we one... exploring tweaking the dates? No. So is the change of venue going to trump the dates, or are we just going to work within the current no. framework? I think okay. if we can find a different venue for each date, okay. let's go for it. Okay. And if we end up here for one or more, then okay. let's keep the first one here, sure. just because mm -hmm. that's the, the nearest and the easiest to start. Yeah, and then start working on. Some alternatives for the and others. are we tweaking a date to include a Saturday, or is that off the table as well? I don't mind tweaking it to to include a Saturday, but we can also include daytime hours on the weekday if that. Yeah, is. or either one. So. I guess right. if you're going to choose a Saturday, would 
I would choose which one's darker earlier. Is it March or November? November, probably. Yeah. Oh, right, good point, yeah. The letter shoot for, uh, someone probably has a calendar, but the Saturday around the 19th? Of November, yeah, okay. Before or after? And why don't we make that one, we'll reach out to Martin's Point and see. Saturday event? Yeah. And that would be like 10 to, uh, 10 to 2? 10 or 10 to 12? 10 to 12. Are you, are you going to reach out to them then, Tom? Yep. Okay, I'll reach out to them via Tom. Tom will okay. take care of that. <laughs> so we'll do the other three here. Is that right? Are there three here? First one here. Yep. One of the explorers here. Second and third, um, somebody's exploring Wentworth Library. Who's somebody? I don't know. Okay. I, just, I always call that out. Call. <laughs> Yeah, should I, I just email the superintendent to us? <laughs> 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 hey, Julie. Is Julie available? Julie, can you look into Wentworth for the September? Yes. Okay. No, not September. Is June. there one in September? June 25th. Yeah. I no, just, June I 25th do June. might be busy with there's one yeah, camp. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Community yeah. services yeah. camp and stuff, okay. so the September one's probably easier. Okay, so okay. September 24th, Wentworth. Question okay. The and first one's here, do... second one's Wentworth, third one. Second one's not Wentworth. So library June? I mean, yeah, June I would one? say let's do the June one at the library. Okay. Library, if okay. possible. And like I said, if not, fine, we'll just do And who's, gonna, okay. who's reaching out? All right, well, I'll take uh, the second and fourth. Okay. So the library and the yeah, okay. Mark's point. Julie, you're going to ask yep. about. Okay. Great. And then we already have this booked for Correct. March. Correct, yes. yes. Okay, um, and then, Paul, back to what you were saying about who attends yep, these. Yep. Do we want to get into that now? Sure. Yeah, so I think for back-end reasons or reasons of elected officials' times and consistency, my idea would be to keep it, in, unless a, a different member of the BOE and or the town council said, hey, I would really like to get in on some of that action, then I think we should keep it to the the uh, members of these committees uh, for scheduling purposes and for consistency purposes. And if we are going to, as Tom says, what are we going to do with it? What are we going to do with it? I think it's easy to answer, easier to answer the question, what are we going to do with these experiences if, <coughs> if it's within the committees? Mm -hmm. uh, but just to reiterate, my one caveat to that would be make it very well known to the other board and council members that, hey, this is what we're doing. Would you like to participate? I was just going to say that, and that's yeah. how we did it. I mean, we didn't have any expectation that other counselors right. came to help facilitate, but they were always invited, right. and so they often did come. I, you know, the only piece I would add to that is that then as the facilitators, um, being really careful and mindful that we're, we're watching the airtime. Mm -hmm. Because, again, I feel like as council members and as board members, we get our airtime, mm -hmm. and it really needs to be about citizens mm -hmm. and not having a bunch of counselors show up and then and taking all of that. <coughs> that makes sense. Oh yeah. <coughs> not enough oxygen in the room for that. So speaking for myself, I, I would agree. I think it would be better for us as a board, um, as the school board to do it at the community level. I mean at the community, community level. level. Um, so I don't and have a problem with that. The rest of the board I think attend. there needs to be the expectation from us, and I assume for you guys too, but just between us, that whenever those notes come out, like we we say, um, here's the notes from the session to the rest of the board, just yeah. so that they know, like, yeah. because there could be stuff that touches their committees too. Yeah, absolutely. I, I will say one of the reasons to keep it at the committee level would be because it's harder to have someone facilitate a meeting that they haven't helped to develop. Mm -hmm. And so if we're sitting here kind of setting the expectations and developing, you know, how the meeting is going to go, mm -hmm. like that would need to be communicated to someone who was going to facilitate if it wasn't one of us. And don't you also have a standing committee report outs in your yep. meetings? So yeah. when there's a you know, <coughs> regular yeah. Yeah. meeting process for that. Mm -hmm. um, I think... To your point, if somebody came to us and were like, we, I'd really like to attend a meeting, I think that would be okay if they were the second person. I mean, because are we planning on sending two 
members of oops, the school board and two members of town council mm -hmm. to each meeting? Yep. I think that'd be ideal, but I also don't want to overburden this group either. I mean, yeah. as long as we have one and one every time, and then well, it's like two would be better. Three times a year. Well, right? so I mean, I'll probably go to all of them, but that's just... <laughs> And I Julie, no can you correct me? I, I want to go to these. Right? Because this comes up like fairly frequently, I feel like, for the school board, because we're still trying to figure out what the rules are. As long as it's in public and we're not making any decisions, it's okay for more than three board members to be in any one place. Right. You can be in the same space. You just can't be conducting business or having conversations about business. So okay. if you're listening to the community, there's no... You're not violating it. That's any. such a fine line, though, because if we're discuss, if we're having these discussions with the community, and there's four of us in the room, technically we're all. Well, so long as the meeting's noticed. But you're not noticed. making any decisions. Yeah. Yeah. We're not voting on anything. If the meeting, the public's aware that the meeting's happening. The, the meeting's happening. That's really the big, the most important part. And then you all have to behave yourselves that you don't get into the. Yeah, debating. <laughs> right. Matter. You and I should not be having a private discussion <laughs> with two other board members about something that's being said. Which and, and right. just avoid things like, so if this were on an agenda, how would you feel about that? <laughs> right. Right. Those types of conversations. But I sometimes... Don't and, it would force and, the board members not to talk. As, <laughs> as much as it may be okay, sometimes the perception of it is not okay. So we, I think we need to be careful. I disagree. I think we're okay. No, I hear your concern, and I think it's, it's very valid. I've been in a place where there's, you know, a football game, and there's four of us at a football game, and, you know, but absolutely no <laughs> conversation just because we all happen to mm -hmm. want to go to the same event in town. Well, see, um, that to me is different. That's not a sponsored event that's being, like, we're all... It, it would be weird to me if I were at a football game and I looked across the bleachers and there were four town councilors all sitting on the same bleacher together, like, mm -hmm. even if you were talking about popcorn football. and soda and football, <laughs> it, that, that to me is where you run into perception right. problems. Mm -hmm. When you're in a room that's designed to... Chambers. Chambers, chambers. which is literally designed to, you know, be open to elected officials and constituents mingling together, yep. uh, the perception... It's like you said, obviously we're discussing issues mm -hmm. in the community. That's what people expect us to be talking about. It would be a problem if then the four of us were like sitting behind the desk, like, pss, 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 like obviously. And so we would avoid that at all costs. Remember, the purpose is, of this is to hear from the constituents. Right. So you right. shouldn't be, be dominating the conversation. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And four. that was right. So the less we enough. talk, the better. <laughs> Bingo. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So. We have like well, um, okay. Am I forgetting? Am I forgetting anything about these meetings? Roll out. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. That's big. Yeah. Um, Just one housekeeping thing. Yeah. Do you want us to send a doodle poll around so folks can sign up for one of these four dates once we lock them down? Just so you sure. can get it on your calendars. Mm -hmm. Sure. That would yep. be great. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yes. You're so tech savvy. <clears throat> I said we. I didn't say me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I feel like um, we can do the rigmarole and put it on our social media. We can put it on our website. You guys can put it on your social media. You can put it on your website. Um, I am happy to create or jointly create a flyer that we can put um, at the library. Uh, I don't know what else are you guys thinking. But maybe, oh, maybe. sorry. My whole point in saying that, sorry, Sarah, is that I think we need to come up with what we want to call it, and and have any of our pictures or um, images that we're using to go along with it be completely consistent between the two groups. Okay, sorry. I was just gonna say, forget the channels for a second. And maybe the the what? And so we yes. agree on like what we're saying, and then we can blast it everywhere. And I, I admit, so we're calling it what? Oh, I have no idea. Quarterly I just know we're not name. calling it the summit. <laughs> okay, so first things first, we need a name. <laughs> the last version was constituent meetings. I like round tables. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fine with Quarterly round tables. Quarterly community round tables. Oh, Quarterly on, community round tables. Quarterly community round tables. No, no. What okay. about just no. community round tables and in the description we say we that they're quarterly? Be held quarterly. <laughs> <laughs> 
You're such a problem. This is where the fun <laughs> committee work starts right now. We're going to spend the next 20 minutes talking about the Start name or something. Like. All right. But this is important. It <laughs> is important. It is. I really... I think the name, I think the word quarterly should be in the title to reemphasize that they're going to be quarterly. Yeah. That they are reoccurring. Well, see, <laughs> yes. Right, that they're reoccurring. I think that there's yeah. something to that. So let's call well, it I wasn't necessarily 100% on board on quarterly, just like, so you know, I was like more like, like, Around energy, but that's what me. if we said round tables? <laughs> the table round tables? <laughs> so there's more than one. <laughs> They're just gonna expect many tables when they show up. That's not gonna work. These tables aren't round. <laughs> I am all for Somebody's either right, yeah. making something long enough that could have an acronym, or short enough that we don't have to spit it out. I would like sh I would like shorter as opposed to acronym. I think we live okay. in so then a it's world community of... roundtable. Okay, held quarterly. I like subtitle like held quarterly. <laughs> Simple. Held quarterly. And then the couple One goals. Of many times well, I do the think that... Um, but actually, Paul, though, I do think Julie had a really good point. I got a victory earlier. I'm fine. <laughs> I think Julie had a really good point. Like, whatever graphic we choose, it should be community roundtable. And then we should have the four dates yeah, listed. Yeah, No, totally agree. All yeah. four of them mm -hmm. um, on, the, on whatever flyer we come up with. So that kind of speaks to the ongoing nature of them, if we have more than one date. Julie's prior thought was kind of issuing a challenge, you know, make the effort to attend at least one, right. mark, mark your calendar, mm -hmm. kind of thing. What did you call it? A prayer march? What did you just say? <laughs> prior <laughs> like, where did, I thought march. we were allowed to talk about prayer. Prior <laughs> thought? Prior thought. Oh. <laughs> Definitely not prayer march. Uh, I guess I... Prior <laughs> talk. I'm like, oh. I didn't hear that. <laughs> it's the new jargon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, um, can we come up with, like, so I, I liked, you know, in terms of, and we, there seemed to be some consensus around what the goals are, so just a few kind of taglines or, or bullets, if you will, around what those goals are yes. that we can all so, agree on. So I think it was what about building a stronger thing? community was something I heard Julie say that I really liked. Um, <clears throat> uh, citizen engagement and involvement, something along um, with that. I like involve. Better like even than engage. Better than engage. Yep, okay. I do too. All, so community roundtable, all dates. We want um, the goals. Can you say that again? In community, uh, it, um, building stronger. Building community. stronger community. Building a stronger community, one roundtable at a time. <laughs> Oh, I like that. Quarterly. 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 Round, one quarterly round table at a time. <laughs> See you in the quarter. See, the branding's already working, yeah. guys. See, See you next quarter. What if you had, like, this isn't it, but some sort of logo that had the months, because that wouldn't change every year. Right. Yeah. And so then people would just be solidified. I know it always happens March, June, September, November. Yeah. But, I like yeah, that. something cooler than that. Wait, what was the second one we wanted to use? Um, something involved or engaged. Yes. Building a stronger community. Looking for an action word, right? <laughs> I am looking for an action word. Increase citizen involvement. No. I'm always a fan of compassion, empathy, mm -hmm. sense of feeling. Do we want to do something around dialogue? Connected. Connectedness. Someone said earlier two way dialogue. Yeah. No. Engage. Take back. Build. Take back. Take back. We have building. I'll take credit. his credit. credit. That was me. Building a strong community. What's something that goes with building? I mean, can we can we flush this out? Do we have to do that now, or can we flush this out like, within the next few days? Can that be an objective? We, we can. Just everybody, right everybody, email me their verb. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, I think involvement. So. You've involved. I have building a stronger community and then something, some sort of involvement. Okay. As long as we have that up, we're good. I think Hillary, the other thing we might want to consider adding, at least in the first one, is uh, like an asterisk of just to differentiate it from all the other things that are happening, so people know this is not another listen to a new session. This is not a yeah. This new. is new. This is a new initiative. Yeah. Um, just by the elected officials. And that's, that is a good way to actually distinguish it here, is to make it, to tr somehow tie in that it is really just the elected officials here. Yeah. Hosted by. Yeah, hosted, hosted by. Hosted by. 
your elected. Hosted by the school board and town council, that would be probably a good way to brand it. Yep, so that's it clearly says, you know, yep. or town council. I like the word hosted. Yes. Hosted by um, I do like the idea of coming up with some sort of image. I like in something with fours, like four leaf clover or something. In that lieu has of that, like, do I mean, uh, just on the top of the agenda, I, I, I don't know if you guys use this or not, but I grabbed it from your website. It's Sorry, I have the, the school board thing and then the town thing. Yep. I mean, we could do something like that. Yep. Yep. That's yep. Good idea. I think that's good. Yep. Like we were talking about consistent branding. It's just a brown and gray. Yeah. So, what do you call that? I, I said orange, image, but I meant brown. Uh, orange. orange. I was going to say, we're going <clears> to. <throat> Is, is, is it's 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 to town us to do it. Yeah. And we have some... Yeah. The, with the, the um, reeds, reeds. The yeah. marsh yeah. thing. Yeah. 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 Who's called? Yeah. That's not, not the official one. That was the three... Well, yeah. 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 Is this the old That's, one? or is That is the official one. Spill it. Is the other one too? A and D. This is the official one. No, this is not. Oh, you guys, this is the official one. The circle thing. What's this one then? That's the unofficial one. Yeah. I mean, it's on that's all the all unofficial signs. one that's on every sign. It's on all signs. <laughs> <laughs> the unofficial one that Carter says unofficial. we need to, in everything we do. For brand new guys, <laughs> I think that it's one is like way better. It's, it's part of our branding. But it's the branding. This is the official issue. logo yeah. as adopted the by the Scarborough Town Council. Yeah. Yeah. That's really more for marketing purposes. Uh oh, marketing and branding. <laughs> <laughs> I would use that one. Well, we have, we have a very specific color scheme that we should be using, and you guys do too, so I almost like the official one because it doesn't, it's, it's black and white, so we're not getting a whole... It doesn't... We're not It doesn't clash all with yes, Scarborough's right. yes. red and black. Right. Well, we have, um, we have, we a, have a black have a and white right version. Different versions of this. We actually have one. The red, has, black, the and white is just prettier. We have it's a great style. S. We have a I'm going to leave it to one. Hillary to make the... Yeah. Yeah. Hillary has these things. I have all that the I do not. Oh, okay. Sure. Well, so actually, I don't. I have all the town one. I mean, I have all the school ones. So just I think they're in the drive. Ones. Yeah. I, yeah. I have. The, I have either in the mm -hmm. drive or on my computer from the okay. papers. Okay. okay. So I'll try and put together um, like the flyer, and then from there, once we all tweak it and agree on what we want it to look like, from there we can make some like memes and images for social media. Yeah. Okay. Can we talk about is. dissemination? Too, in terms of I'm going to personally hand them out to everybody okay. that attends the town. So if we're going to create a physical flyer, you okay. know, so we're going to do a press release. Yeah, we could do a press release. I would like yes. to make a TV commercial on Channel 3. <laughs> actually, yeah. I would actually, I need to talk about so that. Frustrated that has been TV on my, the top of my brain. They have done it. They don't yes. do it. Let's it's, do it. I need to. Oh, we're shooting one. It's very soon. Let's do it. Okay. Yes. You're serious? Yes. Why not? Heck yeah. It's totally painful to watch the slides go by that are advertising harvest dinner when we have like actual news that we could be posting to uh, these. And we just, it's not a medium that we have been in the habit of using and we need to get back in the habit. We, we did when the there, video, when the um, kid last year won the video contest, we gave that to them and they were supposed to play it. But why don't we give them this? This is. Irrelevant to this meeting, but why don't we give them this? Spot? Well, wait. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's it's relevant in that we should be giving. <laughs> yeah, like we should I be using the Scarborough Channel more. They will. They need content. Yeah, right. if we it's give it to them, to I it. assume. I challenge yeah. you all to produce content. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Action challenge item is number two. Action <laughs> item number two. Can be filmed on my phone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, I don't. Well, you have to check with Michael yeah. Hoffmeyer. There's a specific format they need. What Sorry, for videos, video? for yeah. the... Because when we did Inside Scarborough Public Schools on YouTube, he couldn't play them. And when I did the, when the video, the two kids who won the video contest, one of them could be played and one of them couldn't. Uh, so yeah. there is, you, we All right. would have well, to so check those with those are questions, logistics. Yep. Maybe invite him to a meeting. No, we do have cameras that we'll, we loan out, so th those certainly will produce acceptable oh. video. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. Okay, so we have the physical flyer, the press release, the Scarborough Public Television, social media. I will volunteer to look into this Scarborough Public Television okay. piece. I will volunteer to be in the commercial. Okay. I'll be in the commercial, too. Yeah, me, too. I, I'll, let me find out how to get your pretty faces yeah, on TV. Get a shape. Okay. Can we do a wrap? <laughs> yes. Oh, my. 
you write it, I'll, I'll say whatever you want. All right. I am from Detroit. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so April is doing that. Because there's a few other things that I had wanted to get on the Scarborough channel, too. Okay. Stuff, so I'll ask all my um, questions. Can we look at the meeting? You know, the Sunday. Monday. <laughs> What's that next Monday? That just <laughs> I feel like it's, it's a warning. I don't know. <laughs> they, have, they always end up getting canceled. So. That's true. What, but maybe now that oh. you're on them, they won't. But I, I have it for 515 next Monday. I'm in New Orleans. <laughs> so, but I'll reach out to Ben. Okay. And, okay. There you are. Boom. Guys. On TV. Look at that. Is this something that we can send in Friday folders? <laughs> uh, is this something that they can put, um, you know? Oh, what about um, the leader, the things to do? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and when is the next uh, e-newsletter? Every two weeks. Every two right, weeks. so we can get... Town yeah, what is the, the yes, I was just going to ask. I was, I put, put the March calendar here so that I could kind of get a rough idea of when we started to, school board, what you guys think this needs to be rolled out. Working backwards from the first date. Yeah, which is the Tuesday the 26th. I think, I think right school. after school vacation yeah. would yeah. be a good time to start. Okay. And that gives us time to flush out some of the details of the marketing. Okay. So I'll try and do a flyer by mid-school vacation um, so that we can break it apart for pieces, basically, for all our other stuff. School board newsletter. Um, oh, I was just going to say, what about um, dates in the school newsletter, uh, school emails? So we, we have like a community board, so if you guys make a flyer, we can post it on the community board. Okay. That's what we do typically with anything that comes to us from other folks. <clears throat> oh, also, we can also share it with the principals and ask them to put reminders in there. Um, they each kind of do it differently. Then but, newsletter. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll do actual hard flyers, like here. Library, Library. yeah. Okay. I was just going to do like, are you picturing like just one page? Yeah, one sheet. Yeah, one sheet. Yeah, yeah, okay. okay. Um, Okay, and then we only have a few minutes left, like, like I don't know, six, seven, nine, ten, four minutes. But um, I just had on here, and, and maybe this is jumping the gun a little bit, but um, I wanted to talk about if there are any other ideas or things that we can accomplish as, as a joint communications team other than the roundtables. Like, for instance, we have our superintendent search... I mean, this actually, this is very specific, but we have our superintendent search forum tonight, and we have a survey that the community members can fill out, and I had emailed Larissa earlier um, asking if they could cross-reference that information on the town website because we're trying to get it out to yeah. a wider audience than just parents and teachers. Um, that's a super specific example, but um, I don't know if there's other things that are along the, that vein that we can kind of coordinate our efforts on. Maybe an, uh, an agenda item for next meeting is we can share what our timeline is for the budget communications that we have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and try and get some of those aligned. If you guys have any, I don't know if you have any thought into comms for budget outreach and communications. That's a good idea. We haven't discussed that as a committee. Okay. Yeah. Do we have a timeline? Yeah, we're working on a timeline, like same thing, working backwards from the vote as to what we want to get out and when. Um, for the school portion, I don't, I don't know if that is on your agenda as something that you guys do on, as a part of your committee or not. It has not been. We haven't talked about it as a communications committee. And it hasn't historically. I mean, the com communications committee on the town council has only been in existence two years. So two years ago, it was the first year, last year, year two. So this is year three. And it has, so the last two years, it has not been a part, although in year one, we talked about it, that being an important part of it, um, but we would just have gotten, that was the first year of getting things up and running, and then last mm -hmm. year, it was not, so it could be. <laughs> okay. okay. So I think even just thinking about that, yeah. opportunities to 
let's just talk about you know the cross. Yeah, we'll put it, we'll we'll put it on we'll our agenda and, and then for our get some meeting. more. Yeah. I mean, I think in general, do you guys do the liaison? Do you guys do the liaison? Yes, I am officially so, the yeah, right. liaison to town council. So I think in general, I mean, obviously this is an, our committee's working together, but just the optics of having now there's a liaison to the town council from the school board. Um, I think just the being anytime we can present ourselves together when it's appropriate is important. Um, so I, I feel like that separate of the communication committees, there's also efforts in other areas to work towards that. The liaison being one of them, trying to make it a point to, to speak at my um, at my committee updates. I try to make this point. Always bring something to the table for the BOE. But that's not at the committee level, so to speak. But I, I feel like there's other efforts that aren't just here at this table. Right. And I have so something that I we talked about two years ago, and then last year it kind of died on the vine. But I would love to talk more about it. If I mean, I think this is great. I think just having us sitting at the table together, not talking about budget pieces, but talking mm -hmm. about how we engage our, our community is, is huge and uh, sends a very different message from what people have seen in the past. And so, like, one thing that I've always tried and wanted to, and Tom, you can attest, because I mentioned Dunk Tank, tank several times for um, Summerfest and town councilors, and I'd be happy. But if it's not the Dunk Tank, just doing something okay, fun. I'll do Dunk Tank. I'll do, I'll I'll do, do something else. Fun. See, I would do a Dunk Tank, too. But doing That's something fun. We would fun, all have very long lives. Something fun <laughs> and visible <laughs> as a, I as, as, as together, and not just our, these two committees, but the full boards um, at Summerfest, I think is a important message I think it's important I was thinking about this earlier too when we were talking about how we I mean how we attract people to a round table how we attract people to come and talk to us quarterly and what that means for the constituents is something you know that I think is I don't I don't want to assume what that means like but I think being approachable and you know having a little fun is, is certainly it, it draws people building. it draws yeah. people in yeah, yeah. I'm thinking about when there's different things happening in the community, can you all endorse it? Like mm -hmm. when it's, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> like when they clean up the Eastern Trail or yeah. clean up the marsh or other various things that are happening in the community that we all benefit from, you guys can sort of endorse yeah, that. Yeah, Project Grace. I think that's a great, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the field yeah. rally, yeah. Yep. I think that's a great point. Look for opportunities to co mm -hmm. celebrate yeah. something. Endorse each other. The other thing that I, I did the first year, very intentionally was, um, I mean, you, you start to know uh, just based on different meetings and different topics, different, you know, where different viewpoints are coming from. And I did a personal invitation to those people because there were certain people I wanted them to sit across the table from a different person and meet and look each other in the eye and get to know each other. So we here all have a very different sphere of influence that we can bring and I can easily guilt my friends into at least a yes. few little <laughs> and connections into coming to a few things, and I, um, I think that's a powerful piece too. Is just look, I could use your help. Could you know I again to Julie's point? point. You know, would you be willing to commit to trying to attend at least one of these sessions, um, and be thoughtful? I like don't just invite the BFFs, but also just I was very intentional about, you know, trying to different yeah. geography in Scarborough, different mm -hmm. demographics, all of those pieces. Okay, this was so, I, I'm really happy we did this. So thank you everyone for coming and engaging. And I think it's gonna be really great to do some of these. I, I, I mean, just speaking personally, we did the budget outreach and I did some of the listen to learns and I, I find it very valuable to go out and just be approachable and talk to people face to face. So, so hopefully we can, you know, continue with that and, and broaden it by doing this together. Thank you. So thank you. Thanks, Hillary. Want to take a couple of comments? We've had a member of the public sitting here. Yeah. Oh, are we supposed in, to do that? In the spirit of being approachable. Yes. <laughs> Come sit at the table. Would you like to like the table? I was just observing. I uh, it's not something I thought about very much. Um, I think you can comment though. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So step up here. Oh. <laughs> See Maybe. now that makes it too official. Have him sit on the please. No, thank you. <laughs> Um, Even it's, <laughs> it's good that you're looking to reach out and engage the community. Like, I don't know that you need to do that through the communication. You should do, but you can also do that on your own. 
and then there's no conflict. It's like if you have a question about how people feel about a topic that's coming up, you can put it on your own social media or you can reach out to uh, constituents. I don't see a lot of that happening. In some other towns, you see it happening more frequently. So that's just, I guess, my thought. Other than that, it sounds, it's great that you guys are here. Cool. Thanks. Thanks, John. That's a good point. <clears throat> I just, one We're other thing that, that though, was kind of like, I don't think we're, like, encouraged to do that in board members. Sorry. Um, remember how I talked to you about the thought exchange? Yeah. So yeah. today at the regional service center that we're not officially a part of yet meeting, um, we, Gorham is using it because they have, they used it for their building project and also because they're looking at start times. And so they have, um, they're, Thought Exchange is willing to offer us like a consortium rate if that's something that the town of Scarborough is interested in through that Warren group. Is using that? They're using Thought Exchange, yeah. Yeah, they didn't buy the full one-year subscription. They just oh. are test kind of Have test Have you talked to the one. Gorham Super about holding out until we can try to negotiate a good deal together, or is that not the way it works? No, we're going to yeah. try to negotiate a good deal together okay. with all of us, but I wasn't sure if that's something that maybe as joint communications you would be interested in or not. Um, because they're going to schedule kind of like a product pitch, yeah. and maybe one or more of you would want to come to that and hear it firsthand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Especially if we can mm, share our service. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Would yeah. we have yeah. to yeah. be a part yeah. of it's the, super the regional service center? Well, right now we are, you know, there's the fish honorary 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 um, but in terms of the rate, I think they're going to offer it just because to. they're Gorm was the first one in Maine to to use the product, and so that's how we are kind of bringing that and one other product into Maine. So uh, trying to use our, our leverage in that way. Perfect. We are still on there. I do you have a minute? Because I have a separate question for you. Right. Are you going up to the high school? Are we? I have pine bench now. That's why I'm stuffing oh, my face do? with some peanuts and chocolate sure. chips because I, this is my right. dinner. Apparently.
the, the game was so boring. Anybody have a favorite mm. commercial? I didn't think they were that great. <laughs> was supposed to be co-chairing this, but he had another obligation with the state, um, so he had missed <coughs> Peter's offer to fill in as co-chair, um, but also just given this is my first time sort of doing the Joint Finance Committee, appreciate any support from anybody else. Uh, Kate, Julie, Tom, you guys have been around <laughs> doing this before, <laughs> so I appreciate that support. Um, you all have the, the agendas in, in front of you. Uh, I believe you just have somebody else coming. Johnny, you mind sharing? Just yeah. so you can copy. Awesome. <coughs> we have an extra stack. Yeah. 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 Uh, so just the, the purpose of this is really most of it mostly a scene setting um, for the rest of these sessions. Uh, so just go over norms, objectives, and goals. Um, you know, what, what that means in terms of what our role and responsibilities are. Um, and then we've asked Tom and Julie to give us a debrief of so, uh, some of the sessions that they've been holding, so the listen to learn sessions. We'll talk through the budget drivers for FY20, um, review the schedule, which um, Kate has printed out. I also have some milestone highlights on the slides, um, and then just plan for our next meeting as well. Um, do you like Peter or Pete? <coughs> Peter. Peter, okay. Either is fine. Um, Peter has asked uh, that we add another agenda item as well, which is, um, would you call or at it? At least just a, maybe some conversation around budget targets or budget whatever. Because yes, yeah, I know that that's sort of in process right now. So. Yeah. so if we have time, there is the community forum happening right now, so I would like to get us out of here right on time, if not a minute or two before. So for those who would like to get up to the end of that session, we can. Um, Superintendent. Superintendent search form. So with that, I think we'll go ahead and progress to the joint committee norms. Um, so Peter, this is where I might be, um, defer to you, but these were the norms that were set um, a few years ago in 2015. Um, they were reaffirmed in 2017. Um, so I think really it's up for us just to decide, do we agree with them? Uh, do we want to keep them? If there's anything we want to change or add to them. Yeah, we started for a couple of years with goals, oh, sorry, with norms, so that we you know, established our relationship as a team. And then um, last year, we thought it would be a cool idea to throw some goals in there as well. <coughs> that was a, an enhancement to the process. Yeah. yeah. Sort of a work in, work in progress, right? Well, it's been a little bit different each year, yeah, which is a good sign. Yeah. It's a little cast of characters, so it may change. So maybe, Peter, I don't know, based on your experience, do you want to? Talk through, is there any honor that you think <coughs> should be removed, or do you think, based on how it's gone in the past, this is a reasonable starting place? I mean, I... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> We're going to send you over here. Yeah, I know. Do you want a glass of water? I can... No, I think I'm good. I think. Um, no, I mean, I kind of leave it to sort of the new members of, of the team to kind of look at this and see if it works. These seem to have worked for us in the past, and I think as we go down through them, you know, one of the things we first tried to do when we came together is just to really open up communication. So hopefully this is a safe place where we can talk about the issues in front of us. So, you know, the first one was really about just being open and no hidden agendas and, and talk about what we want to talk about. Um, you know, I think in the past, and it's sort of a microcosm of the world right now, but it's also a microcosm of, you know, the conversations we've had in the past. But how can we treat each other with dignity and respect, just kind of have civil conversations and exchange of ideas and, and, and those types of things. I think that helped us kind of guide us through some conversations. Um, we really tried, it's really hard, we tried to really practice just listening first, make sure we hear everybody's voice, go around the table. These are things that kind of had worked for us. You know, I think the history was in the past, relationships hadn't, we, that, was this, was 2000, when was the first year we kind of did the joint meeting? 
2014, 2015 was the first time we came together. So prior to that, the relationship had been, you know, we really didn't, we kind of talked past each other. We really didn't sit down and have conversations. So that's why this is on here. Um, we, you know, we do understand we're two different bodies and we have different governance and different ways that we conduct business. So just this was just really make sure we respect those those different processes that we have, both as a town council and as a board of education. And most importantly, just bring a sense of humor. <coughs> and as we started the meeting with just kind of getting it started, having some laughter and some lightness is important. Um, and again, I think the ones that we added last year was really around how do we communicate effectively? I mean, so much of what we do is communications. So how do we make sure we can communicate effectively so then we can communicate out to everybody else effectively? Um, and then, you know, I think it added, and I, and I don't know if, you know, Kate, whether you added this, but it, I think last year we added, in the past we kind of met, but maybe never had specific takeaways and to-dos. And so that's why this was added, to make sure at the end of each meeting, everybody's clear about what will be ready for the next meeting. Yeah, we put that on last year on the agenda as just sort of a reminder that, you know, as we walk away, we want to be thoughtful about what we've committed to. But again, this is a working document, so for all of you that are joining us, um, if this is great, but I think this is a time if anybody else has anything else they think we should add, uh, this would be a great time to talk about that. I think it's good to start, and one of the things that I think uh, we have established, so April and I are also on the communications, communications committee, which we just met um, with these guys beforehand in the joint session, so I think that will be really helpful in terms of your last point, which is communicating uh, with each other, but also with the community, making sure we're still not there. So making sure, I guess, you know, a, a specific action from these meetings would always be for us to kind of circle back with the communications meeting. He's done. Usually you have something to... Yeah, no, I thought I'd listen. I'd begin by practicing transparency and uh, listening first. <laughs> it's a new thing for me. Uh, one thing I would say, though, is uh, I think maybe we'll get into this uh, uh, when we talk about budget targets, but, uh, um, but I'm fine with the process goals in terms of developing the budget this year. You're fine? And, okay. Um, you know, look forward to it. Thanks. Does it kind of need any Everybody's okay. Great. That goes for the committee goals as well. <coughs> so we're agreed that we'll move forward with what we have here, and we could always revisit if something arises. Okay. That's great. Great. So I think the next item was for. Um, was just for you and Tom to share your readout. <coughs> yeah, we're not you collaborated, so things? I'll start and you can fill in. Sure. Um, this year it wasn't attended quite as well as it was our first year. Mm -hmm. This is our second year. <clears throat> I did my tally. We had uh, 24 different community members attend one of four sessions. We had a number of folks attend multiple sessions. So I think we had 18 unique attendees. Um, a bit underwhelming, frankly, for the effort put forward. But having said that, I think each and every time there were meaningful conversations. I think those that attended, uh, I hope, left with, in a better place, that they had their questions asked. They were small enough groups that we were able to really have uh, personal conversations for nearly two hours in all cases. Um, it was interesting. We, we did try to break up uh, the locations, the time of day. Uh, unfortunately, the first one was uh, kind of a snowy morning, so that might have hurt our attendance. And the one we had midday at the library was pretty sparsely attended. I think we had four people at it. But again, that might have been the most robust conversation we had, mm -hmm. um, as it turned out. Um, we really try to use the opportunity to hear from the community what they like, what they don't like, really to inform us as we start to formulate the budgets. Uh, this year, for the first time, I heard very loud and clear in one of the sessions uh, it was loaded up with uh, Higgins Beach folks. Their civic committee came, there were five or six of them. And essentially their message was, we love what you're doing, the sort of effort that you put forth in terms of parking enforcement and the like. Uh, we like it, keep it going, which was helpful and meaningful. Um, but I honestly, I don't have any other specific takeaway in terms of uh, from the process. But again, we had productive conversations, I thought, throughout. 
Julia, I don't know what your impressions were. I would echo much of what, what you said last year. It seemed like there were very clear themes for us on the school side. Um, specifically, it was like word language, and, you know, expand <coughs> word language, um, expand music offerings. I didn't hear that so much um, this time, but again, there weren't a lot of school folks with school-aged children who attended any of the sessions collectively. Um, I think we, <coughs> with the exception of the last session, which was at Wentworth, um, and that really turned into more of like a robust conversation about a whole variety of things. Including, mostly school. Yeah, it was mostly, what, did you feel like it was mostly school? Well, certainly. Hmm, I, I thought I earned a master's degree after that. <laughs> I did get a little, um, but a, was... I was a little soapboxy a couple of times talking about various issues, but um, I think it was more people just processing different priorities and things that are going on than saying, like, here's a direct ask or service that I'm, we're looking for. Uh, in the first session, there was conversation around, like, a pool and an ice rink and a community <laughs> center. Um, and Tom talked about, you know, needing to find partners or the idea of finding partners to help fund that. And then some other really specific things, um, like different club offerings and how do we decide what to offer and what not to offer. And so um, I just made a note that I know one of the things that the <coughs> athletic department would like to do is a Title IX student interest survey so that we can really assess are we meeting all of our students' needs and um, do we have equal access for um, both genders or all gender identifying students. Um, I'm trying to think if there was anything else really to add to that. Were these mostly, were they mostly the same voices we usually hear, or were these really a diverse mix of uh, I new voices? I've been around 10 years, so I, I've got to know a lot of people. I think it was only one new person I met. Um, but not surprisingly, these are folks who, that are engaged, engaged. That, that care about yeah. community, that have an opinion yeah. about things. So, um, I had not interacted with the Higgins Beach group in, in that way before, mm -hmm. so that was fun to hear from them, sort of their perspectives about what services are working mm -hmm. well. Did they indicate how they heard about the meetings? Uh, these folks, there's a civic committee of the Higgins Beach Association, so they pride themselves on you know, understanding what's going on in town, and they made a very concerted effort. Again, there were five of them there uh, purposely to, to send that message. And it was done in a very positive and, and productive way, mind you. Um, so they're folks that are tuned into what's going on. These were advertised on the district's Facebook page, the town's Facebook page. I assume it was part of the e district newsletter. newsletter. Yep. And also um, on that board down by um, uh, Mark Maroon's I was going to say mainly Raps, but that's not there yeah. anymore. Mm -hmm. Were they in the leader? I don't know if they were in the leader or not. No. I don't did recall. Did we hit social media along with that? Yeah. We did. Yeah. Yep. One of the things the school department added this year in December was a, replicating really this community li listening sessions, but doing it with our staff. And so Kate and I went out to each of the schools during lunch periods and made ourselves available for any staff who wanted to come in and talk to us about, you know, where they felt supported, where they needed support, um, what they saw as budget priorities. They could also ask questions about how different things worked. That was very informative, and it's really, um, you will see lots of evidence of that staff voice in the budget proposal that we're putting forward. How well attended was that? Very well attended. We had, um, had at Wentworth. 87 people, I think, across the mm -hmm. district, and it I was different at different attended. schools. Yeah, each school was a little bit different. Um, Pleasant Hill was our first, and so they were kind of nervous, like, we don't know what to say or ask. We, so the principal helped get people in there, and then once folks came in the room, it was a really natural conversation, and Kate and I kept notes, and then we um, synthesized the notes and pulled out the emerging themes that were sort of district-wide, and our promise was to send the, our findings, if you will, to the whole staff before winter break, and we were able to do that. Um, and then the principals have also continued to engage staff in developing proposals for the budget. So um, typically I think they would listen to staff or have conversation with staff and then they would write the proposals where several of the principals have actually asked um, staff to help draft those proposals. Julia, maybe we can share a copy of the summary. The letter? This group. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure. I don't know if you have the highlights off the top of your head though. You want to share with them? 
some of the themes? Um, well, definitely keeping class sizes down was one of the themes. Um, teachers wanted to have access to discretionary funds so that they could purchase ancillary items for their classrooms that maybe aren't a part of the bulk order. So we try to bulk order as much as we can so that we can get the biggest you know, bang for our buck, so to speak. But they felt um, that not being able to just even a small amount of money to be able to buy the special materials for a specific project that supported the curriculum. Um, that was really very clear at Wentworth where it seemed like other schools had some sort of structure in place for that. Um, in our primary schools, the increasing demand of the um, incoming students, the social, emotional, and behavioral demands that students have are requiring staff to work in really different ways, and they were inquiring about additional human resources to help support that, um, which we, you know, I'm always saying like a broken record, record, how do we ensure we're solving the right problem? Because, you know, more people doesn't necessarily solve the issue. Is it are we asking too much of our youngest learners? Do we need to look at our curriculum? Um, do you need as staff um, different training or new training um, so that you can feel better prepared to deal with these incoming and changing needs? And that's really a story that we're going to see playing out for a number of years. Um, this year, we know our incoming case, we have our highest number of students coming in requiring services than we've ever had um, as far back as any uh, current staff can recall, so we know that's going to put additional demands on our on our K two teachers. So trying to um, hear them and you know hear their there's a lot of stress and anxiety. I would say across the board that was a theme that I definitely took away from leaving each conversation. Partly because you know they get 20 minutes and they're trying to tell us their priorities and eat their lunch and go to the bathroom and do all of that, um, but also that there's some really big needs in our schools and. We've been, you know, working on this really tight budget for a number of years, and, you know, there's a breaking point, and I think we're at that breaking point, um, and I think that this is a good year for us to start making some wise, thoughtful, evidence-based incremental investments back into our school programs um, to, to help staff feel supported and heard, um, but also be, you know, to better meet the needs of our students. We've kind of kept going as thin as we could with our um, little discretionary amounts in our budget, and it's, people are starting to feel the. <coughs> yeah, the only other thing I would throw in um, that we heard from all of the buildings was that we don't have enough substitute teachers. And yeah, it's a it, it's kind of that same um, story that you've heard is telling about bus drivers that there just are not people ready to sign up and come and work with us as subs. So we, we brainstormed a few interesting ideas about trying to uh, encourage and recruit substitutes. Um, but that was definitely a theme because people are feeling spread thin and, and it, when someone's out, it just creates that extra little stressor. Um, and particularly when we're trying to do professional development doing during the day or trying to free time for teachers to work together on something, it's just one more little element to that that, that makes it really difficult. Quick question when you said the, the special needs of the highest, not special needs, but children coming in with higher needs is the highest you've seen. Is that is that a function of society? Do you think that's a, a function of people that are moving into our community? Is it is, is, is there a reason why that that's <clears throat> I have a couple of theories, none of these are um, you know scientific in any in any way, but we are in the midst of an opioid crisis, and you know these children are becoming of age. We know that one in every four babies born in Maine are <coughs> born drug addicted, and so I'm not making that assumption, you know, like, I'm not making that direct parallel, but I think that <coughs> that's certainly something that's been on my mind for the last several years, thinking about the implications of this and what that's going to mean for what public schools are charged with doing. Um, I do also think that we're identifying, you know, children younger and earlier because we know that early intervention is much more cost efficient and effective than waiting until um, until they're older so I think that's a good thing that more students are being identified younger and and then you know to the the social emotional needs I think that we're in a place of correction in public education for the last you know decade or more we've really been focusing heavily on accountability and academics and you know test test scores and 
paying a lot of mind to, you know, what's the curriculum in terms of the academic instruction, where now we're seeing a big conversation in public education around that social emotional development and how critical that is. And when you have children coming from two working, you know, working parent households, um, we can be frustrated that they don't have the skills that are coming, you know, coming to us already with the skills, or we can adapt and adjust. And so I think that we're just seeing that <coughs> really, we've been talking about the whole child for a long time, but we really need to make sure that our behaviors and our expectations then match that, that conversation. So I, I think it's a lot of things. Um, it's hard to, to really say. One of the myths that we do often hear is that people come to Scarborough because our special ed services are so good, and they are very good. We offer very comprehensive programming here in our district. But when you look at our percentage of our population identified or classified as, as special education comparative to other districts in the state, we're actually on the lower end. Um, and so I think that, you know, it's not every family can just get up and move to a community like Scarborough when their child has specific needs. And so I think that that's probably fewer people than, than folks sometimes think, just given the housing market. Oh, did you get a sense in, in the conversations, was there anything about process of the budget? Or was it more about people talking about services they want or they didn't, and what they valued? Anything yeah, about the like, process? Anything about I don't recall a single comment on process, frankly. You, Julie? didn't really ask about the process. Um, I know Larissa did those focus groups around mm -hmm. the budget book itself. I yeah. think all of you probably have seen that. But yeah, I think I, I may have addressed it in that uh, we are going to change up and <coughs> several different versions of the budget depending on the appetite and the aptitude of the reader. Um, you know, a deep dive, mm -hmm. kind of a medium, and then the cliff notes. So, so uh, it, it will all be there, but it's going to be packaged slightly differently. And that's a direct outgrowth from some of the work that did with some focus groups yeah. on what they liked and what they didn't like about the budget. Um, anything about the increase or anything about, you know? No? There were um, some conversations at the last session around um, having some shared services between the town and the schools, like mm -hmm. a grant writer. You know, is there um, an opportunity there, or um, a com some sort of communication specialist or a PR person? Are there um, some shared opportunities there for us to um, look at that? Actually, we've talked about that here in prior years, haven't we? Sort of the shared communication, mm -hmm. shared grant writers, that type of thing. It's a good idea. Yeah, I think this is the year that, uh, at this point, I'm thinking I will include that position in the budget kind of a, co a coordinator position, not a full-blown communications yet. Um, it's still, still in formation, and Julie and I are still talking about the advantages of that. But I think we've reached the point where we could really use someone, as was discussed at the last communications meeting, uh, really producing content and, and it being their full-time job, as opposed to all of us trying to, as almost an afterthought, oh, let's, you know, how can mm -hmm. we get the word out? Yeah. I think there's great value added by a fairly small investment. Don, did I see you had a question? Yeah, I was just wondering, I, I have a hard time remembering, uh, you know, as a participant last year uh, and asking questions versus answering them this year. So, but it did seem last year that, was there more detailed questions around specific things last year? Or was that just, uh, me remembering my own questions. <laughs> no, I would say that's fair. Uh, and I think that's a function of the, we probably had triple the number of people involved. Huh. So I think just a function of more folks, <coughs> more questions and some more substance, frankly. That's not to slate those that participated this year. It's just, uh, we just didn't have the turnout. Yeah. Do you guys have any thoughts on why that, why that is? Like, was there anything that's different in terms of how we rolled it out? We got higher turnout last year than this year? I, I think people are just so happy with the job we're doing that they don't. I love the trust. It's that sense of humor. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't. I think that 
I wonder about the moving locations if that actually helps because I think that the intent is good like we'll come to you <coughs> but if I'm trying to remember okay there's four mm -hmm. sessions I want to get to one of them and then I got to remember oh wait is it this one at this place at this time or would it be better if they were just a consistent time mm -hmm. and then people could just like lock it into their brain where was that the last meeting we, were just discussing? <laughs> <laughs> we literally decided on the opposite of that. <laughs> I could have used that. I could have used that about an hour ago. Well, because this is new. <laughs> this, uh, this is a reflection. <laughs> no, I don't know. I was thinking it during the last meeting too, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to like mess up your flow. You didn't want to help me out there. That was <laughs> <laughs> well, do you really want to do them all on Saturday at two? Was the question. I don't know. I, I do because I I thought that was helpful feedback because I know a number of seniors who are not going to come out in the evenings in the wintertime. Yeah. And last it. year, our daytime one was the best attended. It was <laughs> And it was here, <coughs> which is like a more sense. I mean, this time we were at the library, and that was our, our we had the least. Attention. Yeah, my, my con concern or uh, frustration is just not reaching uh, more people. Yeah. Yeah. Different yeah. people. Yeah. It's the same old. Um, and that's fine. These are folks that care passionately and are engaged. But there's you know, 19,000 other people in this community. That is a theme. I yeah. think we all feel every yeah. time we. We were just talking about yeah. that. And so we're left with the quandary, does that mean people are satisfied? Or are we not doing a good, good enough job to mix up the locations and the times and the convenience? I, no one has the answer to that. I think it's just there's so many competing priorities. You know, and I'm not like, I swear I don't like work for Thought Exchange, but I think something like that kind of a tool is, is what we have to be thinking about. Because it's anytime, anywhere, and you get to still engage. Um, I just think that I love the idea of face-to-face -face communication, and I don't think we should not do that. <coughs> if we're really trying to pull our community, surveys are nice, but not everyone wants to take a whole survey where, like, with something like this, you literally just put an open-ended question out there, um, and the community makes the themes and, you know, rate, rates the comments and things like that. But um, I also think having an expert who knows how to engage the community, like that's what they do. They have a public yeah. policy background. In a community like Scarborough where people are so engaged, we're, we're actually, I mean, we have like the highest voter turnout, so people want to be engaged. It's just a matter of, you know, creating the right recipe, I think. Um, and I wish I had a stronger background. And, What's and the name of the thing you were talking about, Julie? The thought exchange. Thought exchange. Thought exchange. Do you guys know that? What that exchange is? No. Do you want to just give them a two minute um, summary? Yeah, a real quick. It's basically an online platform that they claim is just as engaging as a meeting, or just as engaging as social media, just as effective as a meeting, and gets better results than a survey. So, mm -hmm. um, for example, Gorham is using it right now um, for to assess their um, building project that they, they have going on. So, I think they had, it was like 900 and some responses. Or it, 900 and some th original thoughts, and then they had like 19,000 engagements, which means that people went on and read other people's thoughts and either rated them. And then what it does is it creates like a sociogram so you can see sort of what thoughts are connected to what. And so it really helps you see, like, oh, there's, you know, <clears throat> that, that thought is an outlier. There's not a lot of people who are, you know, connecting to that thought, or here's where the, the consensus is, or the thought is. And then from there, you can use it in a variety of ways, maybe to drive what your form, your um, hmm. quarterly community um, building <laughs> exclusive involvement. Uh, round table. Round table. Yeah, don't yes. forget the word round table. Round table. There. Quarterly round table no, 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 is no, going to no. be about. No That's a huge job. But then there's a whole bunch of other an analytics on the back side that you can really dig into That's and and, and read them and read the, the comments and see how people are reacting to it. So and it's confidential and there's anonymous. no back and forth. Right. Yeah, anonymous. And there's no back and forth. So it doesn't create kind of. So if we were to purchase a year license ourselves, it would be twenty four thousand dollars for the year, and you can use it as many times as you want. Um, but we're trying to think as a region, you know, can we get a better rate if multiple districts <coughs> want to access it? Um, but I think you could spend just as much money or lose, in the case of question one on the local ballot, as much money if you're not able to engage your community. So it's, 
uh, I'm, I don't have a marketing background, but what's that saying? Like, you advertise when your business is doing good, and your business is bad to advertise, right? Something to that. Tom, you're, um, the, the position that you're proposing, will that include a supporting budget so that they can operate as well for, for media or, or mm -hmm. other associated costs? Yeah, that's part of the process we're going through now. I, I don't see there being huge costs associated with that, and maybe I, it's a good point that we need to explore further. Um, I wasn't contemplating you know, one of these types of platforms necessarily. I think there's a lot of low-hanging fruit just on what we're already doing and doing a better job of communicating that. I think even just someone who's like a great technical writer that can listen to us talk in our jargon-filled expert language and boil it down into stuff that the community can connect to and um, make meaning of. Because as much as we try to do that, right. we own some acronyms in there. <laughs> Paul just grabbed in a bunch of words and said, yeah, those are good. We like <laughs> So whether I seek funding for that, at the very least, I'll, I'll have that position fully developed, at least in concept. So I've found that to be effective to at least, as we talk about priorities, to at least start that conversation, whether it ends up being funded this year. I think it's, I'm certain it's an area we need to go to at some point. So is that a great transition to budget, yeah. budget drivers? Unless there was any other questions. Or so what time? You, you have a hard stop at 6.30, right? I'm trying to get out of here. Or oh, before? 7. Yeah, oh, seven. oh, okay. Yeah. But earlier is better, right? <laughs> <laughs> earlier, yeah, but 7. Earlier is always better. So the predictable wage and, you know, health care related uh, health insurance costs, uh, I'm sure that's true of the school, more so with the school. Um, at this point, very early in the process, we have more than 10 positions potentially proposed by the different departments. Now, all those ten, will make ten new positions. Ten new positions. Mm -hmm. Now, all those won't pass my red pen, but just so you know, that's, uh, and I want to encourage my staff to come forward with their proposals, make their arguments, and <coughs> we won't be able to tolerate all of them, but there's uh, a number, and, and I assure you, all of them have uh, nearly equal merit. Um, I did <coughs> take a page of the school's book this year and encourage my, my staff to get together and called it kind of budget shark tank, but they all kind of made their pitch to their colleagues for a couple reasons. One, um, it was a good, safe environment. They get some good feedback. But I also wanted everyone else to appreciate what else was coming forward, and uh, there was some good collaboration that happened out of that. Um, so that will be a driver of some sort. I'm, I'm not a huge driver. Well, I, I, I'm not at all suggesting that all 10 will come forward in, in my budget proposal but inevitably there'll be some and I think it's important for the U.S. Finance Committee and the community to understand what your professional staff thinks we need to serve the residents and uh, that's an important part of the conversation. Uh, Tom, is there any indication on sort of what level positions those are? Are they sort of senior level, mid-level? Uh, no, no senior level positions. Uh, we have a, a number in the public safety arena. This is part of a multi-year staffing plan that we've had to shelve for a number of years now, so some of it's not not new necessarily. Some other positions like the uh, communications coordinator would be a brand new thing and something that arguably we can live without, but uh, again, I think we should have those conversations and identify where our priorities are. Uh, debt service, I don't see, there'll be a very modest increase. Uh, I don't think you'll really even notice it in the big picture. I suppose the other big one is how we choose to start fund, uh, funding capital yeah. uh, finance. And I know there's a great interest in the part of the finance committee and staff yeah. to continue that migration to fund more items through appropriation through the operating budget than through uh, debt finance. And so <coughs> depending how far we go down that road, that could have a, be a cost driver. I mean, for just for clarification, we have had on the books a policy for years, and actually it's, it was re-sort of upped, if you will, when we redrafted the debt policy, but basically saying that the, the town of Falmouth does this, but as we have depreciation on things that we buy, like, you know, like a great example might be a million dollar ladder truck. What we've been doing in the past is whenever we need that, then we go out to bond and that year we'll bond a million dollars. What some other towns do is say, okay, that ladder truck that depreciates over 10 years, 
for the amount of money that it depreciates, you put a, you, you put it into an equipment reserve fund. So when you need to replace the piece of equipment, you don't have to go to the bond market to get it. You've already sort of pre-funded it, so people are paying for it as you go along instead of having a blip when you get there. And so on our books, in the policy, it said our goal is to get there in six years. So we're taking a look at starting that, so maybe we take a six of what that is and work that into the budget, because the, the budget driver will be, and we got to be careful, is that we're doing a, a revaluation this year, which is going to add a tremendous amount of property value. But I don't think taxpayers are going to be open to all of that additional revenue being spent. Yes. I think there is an expectation, and we'll talk about this in the budget goals, that there should be an expectation that as their property goes up in value, that their mill rate should come down, so it, it moderates the impact of taxes. Um, so, so there are some things that we had targeted as a as a finance committee that we, this may be a year we can start doing some of the things like the capital reserve. But I think that weaves into the, the other conversations we'll have as as we progress through the budget. Uh, I just, I'd like to add one point to the, what Peter just said, uh, and I'll, I'll hold getting into details until we talk about goals, but a sense I have is that uh, uh, because of a couple of things that are happening, uh, an expectation of additional funding from the state, uh, the completion of uh, the, the reval, and, the, and are continuing to do the, uh, the residential reval, and some other things, you know, expectation that maybe we've had uh, belts tightened for a while, now it's time to loosen a little bit. You know, I, th I think there's a risk, a real risk of people having an expectation that we're going to you know, address uh, everything this year, or somehow it's going to be an easier budget session. So I, and then not to not to be uh, contrarian too much about it, but I think it's be very important for us as a committee to be cautious and careful about that, and or to be attuned to that, so that we're you know understanding the needs, but also you know not giving rise to an expectation that you know we're going to you know be able to address a lot of things. For example, you know, ten ten new positions, uh, you know, on the municipal municipal side, for example. I think it. It's going to be important for us to be attuned to it, but also cautious about it, about expectations. So, what else we see, Tom? Anything else? That's well, on the good way? side, Don alluded to it. Um, it's not a, I guess it is a driver, but in a good way. Uh, based on the governor's proposed budget, uh, there will be increase in uh, municipal revenue sharing. I think that's in the, in the tune of two hundred twenty thousand dollars additional. Yep. And then the homestead exemption going up to sixty-seven percent yep. will be about seventy-five thousand additional dollars to us. Yep. And I don't. I think it's too early to know what impact <coughs> there might be on the uh, education side. It's still um, in process. It is too early because the Department of Education sent us a nasty email this morning and said, "Stop calling us." Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're working on it. <coughs> we're supposed to have but the, the, but the nice. Sorry. We're supposed to have ED 279 yeah. by Friday. Uh, the, the good news is that the reason they don't want us to call them up is because they're working feverishly to get our documents out and, mm -hmm. and to do the, the forecast for us. So they're saying Friday we'll have what's called the ED 279, which is the subsidy printout for each district that, that tells you what you're going to be getting. So I'm I think we can expect to that. probably still be minimal receivers, though. Um, my, my, okay, so I know we'll be minimum receivers. <laughs> and I'm, I'm counting on that being a small increase to subsidy. My hope and and um, little gleam of, of positive feeling is that we may actually jump back up a little bit higher, but I don't really know how that's going to play. For those of you new to this game, uh, the good news is we won't be losing money, and that has been the story of the decade, basically. Exactly. That, uh, we've been hemorrhaging. We'll be scooching back up. So, there's something for that. <coughs> and the first time in a number of years we don't have any sort of revenue gap. That we <coughs> so. With that being said, there are a lot of needs coming in, as I said earlier, and so we're anticipating, um, obviously, increased personnel needs <coughs> across the board. And Kate, are you done? Are you Please. all set? Yep, I am. Okay, so... Yeah, on the school side, as Tom indicated, we've got some personnel drivers. Um, I think you've probably heard me say, till you want to fall over and die, that we have about 75% of our budget in personnel costs. 
Um, and so this year we have the negotiation of the teachers and professionals bargaining agreement, uh, which is our biggest group. And so as we go into the budget conversations, we don't have a, a salary table for those folks for next year. And negotiations will be running along parallel with the budget development process. So at the moment, that's going to be, you know, obviously it's a big factor. Um, we're going to be making some assumptions so that we can allow negotiations to go forward. Uh, but that'll be a cost driver for sure. Um, secondly, we've heard from our friends at Anthem Health Insurance that they're going to be raising our rates potentially as much as 10%. Um, we have, uh, they work, not to get too far into the weeds, but they work on the basis now of a medical loss ratio, which is um, a way of making sure that they're recouping their costs. And uh, Scarborough's medical loss ratio for the last year was not fabulous. Um, what was it? I'm sorry? What was it? I don't know. I just know that they've said, hey, you know, not looking that great. That's, this is as, as scientific as they've gotten with me so far. Um, what that means is that we're probably going to be in the higher level of rate increases across the state, but they haven't set the top level yet. So within the next couple of weeks, they're going to be setting um, the top level, so we'll know what the maximum is, which will help us um, determine what you know the worst case scenario is to budget for. And then uh, they'll actually um, they'll produce. <coughs> actual rates in the middle of <coughs> April. So we will come out at first reading not really knowing the answer, which is pretty typical. Um, and we'll have a guess in there, um, but we'll know that that's the worst that it can be, and then we'll hope that <coughs> in the middle of April before second reading we'll be able to drop that down a little bit. Um, the third big personnel factor is uh, in uh, main PERS costs, main state retirement costs. The employer share has been raised again for fiscal 20. Um, it's going up from 3.97% to 4.6%, I think. Um, my coffee's wearing off. <laughs> I lose the third decimal point. But that's, it's not a massive driver, but it's going to add another half, $50,000 or so, just without any changes in, in payroll um, to our operating budget. So those kinds of costs are, they're kind of mechanical in a way. I mean, you, it sort of is what it is. Uh, but it's something that, that we're, we're juggling as we start building the budget, and it's obviously a big factor. And then the next thing is, what do we do about staffing? What do we do about class sizes? What do we do about um, some of these increasing needs that we're seeing coming in, particularly at the K-2 level? Um, both addressing that with, with personnel, with professional development, and with space, with facilities. Um, so those are our biggies. And so when you say space, are you, are you anticipating a capital expenditure for space? We're talking right now about expanding room at, at Eight Corner School. And modulars. modulars. Yes. Yeah, so two modular classrooms is the is the plan that we've sort of got out on the table with the Long Range Planning Committee, and we've been sort of fighting through some ideas and, and thoughts about how that might look and uh, trying to get some costs together. So whether that goes into the FY20 capital budget or a piece of it does or we find other ways around that, um, that's something that's out there. And... Uh, <coughs> They're in the capital budget, they're the other big driver that I'm hearing right now, and we're just beginning to draft that, <coughs> is uh, the uh, HVAC system, heating, ventilation, and air conditioning at the middle school. Um, the K2s are also <coughs> a little wonky, but the middle school is um, starting to have kind of catastrophic failure all through the, the HVAC system, which was designed to run for 20 years and now is on year 20. I feel like I just went, bleh. <laughs> Did I miss anything, Julie? No, I think that was. And that's, that's very, very preliminary. Um, I guess I could speak to the, to the process just for a second. Um, we did talk about going around to staff, um, doing the listening sessions there. We've had our leadership individual meetings. Each department has come together with Julie, Joanne, Monique, our director of curriculum and instruction, and myself. 
um, sometimes other stakeholders hopping in at the table. And we've gone through and worked on what we call our local services budget. That's going back to the leadership team tomorrow um, for a review. And then uh, we've also put out uh, what we call new proposals, and those have been vetted and preliminarily <coughs> prioritized. Uh, so that's we'll our be, shark tank. That's our shark tank, <laughs> and, and we'll be circling back to the group with some of those once we know where we land on level services and on the revenue side so that we know, you know what, what the impact would be of doing nothing more than what we need to do. What we currently do. Exactly. And we, just in terms of sorting the proposals, we do what's required, um, meaning we have no choice, we have to do it, um, typically because it's driven by some sort of law or contract contract, um, then what's a high priority, mid, and low priority. And to um, Don's point earlier, we are always having this conversation of how do we communicate, you know, what we're investing in this year, but also putting the community on notice of what some of the long-range needs are. Um, <clears throat> and so one example I would give would be the career pathways position that has been in our budget. This will be the third year you're going to see that. Um, I imagine it emerging as a higher priority this year. Um, we've done all we can, you know, stretching existing staff thinly in order to deliver the different types of career exploration opportunities that our students very much need in a 21st century educational setting. Um, but we're really at the point where we need to we need to take the next step um, and make that investment. So, again, this is something that people have been hearing us talking about, and then. Um, We'll do the same thing when it comes to some of the other positions. And the school board, you'll, you'll have a lot of choice in terms of what you're going to be able to include or not include as we develop the budget as well. And the way that um, Kate set this up last year, which I think was awesome, was after we finish ranking all of the priorities required high, mid, low, um, we'll set it up, Kate will set it up for you so you can see, okay, well, what does it mean if we added that investment? You know, what's the impact on both the net and the gross um, budget and so you'll be able to see you know we might be talking about a $20,000 investment well what does that really do to the bottom line um, or an $80,000 investment what does that do to the bottom line <clears throat> I think it's really helpful yeah Kate earlier when you said level services uh, you said it's what we currently do mm -hmm. and then I think Julie you changed it to what we need no, no. Or other, other way, way around. around Kate said need it's so basically it's a we there's the differentiation in there for me is do we look at what we did last year and say do we, is there anywhere we can become more efficient? Always. That happens in those things <coughs> that Kate and I were talking about when we're yeah. developing level services. And then even in the proposal process, we ask um, principals and department heads to think about, you know, is this a new investment or is this a reallocation or realignment of existing resources? So they're always trying to think not just how do I add more, but how do I use existing staff or existing resources to its full potential. Um, so we're, we're constantly looking for efficiencies. But level services, the, the easiest way to think about it is if we close the doors in June and open them back up in August, adding nothing, doing nothing new and different. Um, and so Kate will go through a whole refinement process once we know who's actually retiring. You know, is there any breakage? That's part of that level services um, budget development process as well. Yeah, we do go line by line with, with folks who are, each person is in charge of their individual cost center. So we're looking at things and say, well, you, you know, here's your professional development line. You only spent this much. Do you need what you're asking for? Well, no, actually, we need this. Um, here's your supply line. Can we refine that? Can we knock that down a little bit? So we're, we definitely reduce as many lines as we increase. Um, but because personnel makes up so much of the cost, what we do there is we assume that the folks that are here today are the same folks that are going to be here next year, unless we know for sure that they're going to be in retirement and there's going to be turnover savings. Okay. Anything else? Any questions? Tom and Julie? The only last piece I would add, just in terms of that process, because each year we're refining that and making it, I, I would argue, even better, um, that we also wanted to make sure that we have instructional equity at, as we look across the board at resources, so trying to become more formulaic and how do we um, 
how do we determine how much um, discretionary spending you know an elementary school has versus a middle school versus a high school and looking at students needs um, and staffing needs to make sure that we don't have one school that's receiving much more funding than another if they're delivering the same type of program uh, yeah I was just uh, I was wondering Kate if, or if anyone knew what's the number do you know offhand the number of people in the bargaining unit or units that are in negotiations now? It's, over, it's like 315. I was going to say 320, but yeah, it's yeah. really good. And it's, it's mainly instructional staff and professionals, you said? Anyone who has a professional license, so it's teachers. All classroom teachers, nurses. all support teachers, um, nurses, guidance counselors, social workers, um, and then the special education specialists. Great. Can I ask a question? Thank you. <laughs> sure. Do you have an example of like last year where you might have reallocated staff instead of creating a new position, like a concrete example? Because you, you spoke about reallocating <coughs> rather than... Yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely. I should know right off the top of my head. Was but. last year the middle school sort of STEM re reworking? So, um, well, one example would be the redesign of the educational technicians <coughs> into the the IT positions so that was something that like right on our one pager we really clearly articulated that um, we also reduced two teaching positions at the middle school due to decreased enrollment um, but that enables us to add positions at the K2 due to increased enrollment yep, yep. Um, those would be two examples shifting a foreign language teacher to Wentworth so that we could increase access to students at a lower grade level. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. And then the music program at the eighth grade, um, we were able to use existing staff to expand that programming so that all eighth grade students have some sort of either general music or band offering, which was not happening before. Thank you. Yep. So, so this might be a good place to introduce sort of the, you know, budget sort of targets, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, and after listening to this, I think, you know, it's going to be in the past where we've, we've sort of targeted is, is a 3% or so overall increase. But I think we're going to have to do it differently this year because we won't know. Tom, when we won't know, and it's going to be distorted by your projecting about a, about a $500 million increase in appraisal. No. no, I don't think I've put a number to it yet. But it's big. I mean, it's, it's uh, a significant... I'm not so sure about that. I mean... I, okay, well, well, what's different this year is there's a reevaluation going on, so we won't know that up front. So one thing we had always talked about is trying to target this year. The Finance Committee hasn't met, the Town Council hasn't met, but I would suspect our, at least our public, <coughs> or some of our public is going to be thinking about a 3% overall increase in expenditures. And so... What we asked last year as a process is show us what that 3% budget looks like. What does that mean? Um, Ten new positions on the municipal side and some of the other things we've talked about sure sounds like we're going to come in north of that 3%. Um, maybe not, but I, but I think, so I, I just defer to this group, how do we want to see the budget? In the past, what we've always struggled with and what we asked last year maybe is, Show us what a 3% budget is. Identify what you cannot do. And then we're able to take that 3% budget and add on the things that needed to be add on. And we'll have those conversations as we go along. I don't know, I don't know how this group feels about that process. But I think, I think that is sort of where we've been. How many years have we used 3%, Tom, for the last? Well, I want to be careful. Uh, typically, the 3% is based on, is on tax rate, not on spending. It's a big difference. Well, I, I understand, but uh, how do how do we have if we're not going to know what the reevaluation is? Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I'm not sure the way we did it last year of saying here's a range of what it might be. So the the budget increase might be a negative two percent to a positive four percent or something like those quarters. I don't think that's the best necessarily way to do it. So I, I think, I'm not. I don't necessarily disagree. I'm just saying historically that three percent right. target has been on the tax final rate. tax rate. So, so again, maybe the work, it, it, I don't think we'll settle it tonight, but I think this group needs to decide what is the budget target. If we can't do it on the tax rate because we're not going to know it because we're not going to know the reval, what has been the historical rate of the increases in expenditures? 
and is that the appropriate target or not? But I, but I think I think flying blind is not going to work. We need to kind of say here is a number right. that we should target. If we can't hit that number, let's talk about what it is we can't do. And then I think last year we talked about then we can at least on the municipal side, we can make the decision about what we add on. Would it make more sense to focus on the net? As opposed to expenditures? I was going to say, for the school department, there's sort of an intermediate level, which is expenditures, and then net, which is our ask of the tax resources. Because our revenues are kept in a separate world. It doesn't, we don't really, we have to show our revenues and we have to show our tax ask before it even gets to the point of discussing valuation and tax rate. Right? Well, yeah. I mean, I don't think we have to solve it tonight, but I, but I just think we should give some thought to what those targets we can all agree on make sense to be the conversation starter, however we do that. Yeah, and I want to be crystal clear as to what that, everyone understanding what that target is, because historically there's been some confusion. Right, right, yeah. right. That, that's why we're trying to, yeah. I mean, that's why I think the next meeting of this group, yeah. we should all be in agreement, all understand what it is we're all talking about, so there is no confusion. And, decide on a methodology instead of getting so far down the road that we can't. No. So, I mean, I don't know if others agree. That's, that's just... Well, I just want to build on the points that you're making and Tom's response as well. That, you know, in the past, we've, you know, we've always had the timing effect, right? We don't know what the state's going to give us, so we don't know, you know, uh, most recently what the effect of the re-evaluation will be. You know, when will the budget be drawn? Will it be before or after the impact of the re-evaluation? These are big assumptions and fairly big numbers um, mm -hmm. that can have a big impact on on the bold, you know budget expectations and, and what ranges we're setting. So I think it's absolutely critical for us to be perfectly clear what we want those to be uh, mm -hmm. going forward. And um, you know I think that you know with the size of the increase of value uh, and revaluation, I, I I saw some figures what. Is it three billion now? But the value of our four billion dollars is the value of our total mm -hmm. uh, total taxes are assessed value. Yes. Yeah. You know. and Tom, I thought you did an exhibit for the finance committee last time we met that showed what you thought that number was going to be with the revalue. Yeah, we could we could certainly yeah. model that, and, yeah. and I yeah. expect we'll be forced to. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. just a little more challenging model this time because uh, residential revaluation, not all properties will react the same. The, yeah. the adage is third go up, the third stay the same, or third go down. And so trying to understand, yeah. you know. Right. That, uh, so that, that's the only reason I'm suggesting yeah. this year I think we need a different methodology because estimating what the reval is going to do to be able to talk about the potential tax rate increase it is going to be difficult. So I think we need to pick some other marker that we can all agree on. And however we do that, I just think we need to give it some thought. And I think there's a fair amount of uh, dialogue and education we need to have around that so people are really clear what you know, are going to do, whether it's the same, you know, whether we stay focused on the mill rate or not, but just to say, hey, here's what's happened. Here are the big events that have really occurred. Um, and here's what we're recommending you know, as a joint committee in terms of uh, a methodology that hopefully everybody can follow and that we can hold to. Tom, what are the timelines for the revaluation? You guys are saying we won't have it for the budget, so when will we? Well, uh, what happens every year, and it's reval adds a unique little twist to it, but uh, the budget is always finalized in May, June time frame. The total value of the town isn't set until mid-August, so there's always almost a three-month offset <coughs> as a normal course of affairs. Gets further complicated by some anomalies like a reval that will have a unique, you know, un, uh, you can't look to history to kind of suggest what that might be. Mm -hmm. uh, we've become pretty good at uh, estimating in normal circumstances, normal circumstances what we could expect by just general appreciation and new value to the town. Uh, these sorts of things just kind of add a little wrinkle <coughs> to the, the equation. But that offset is always a challenge that you're finalizing a budget, the voters are asked to, you're asked to vote on it, and the voters are asked to vote on it. Before you know all the information, at least in terms of what the tax rate uh, impact will be, and and we, yeah. I don't know a way around that. Uh, we're going to yeah. have to deal with that offset. We we all go out and vote about the tax rate that we think is going to happen, and then the tax rate is set in October, and 
find that it's a little bit different. Historically, it's, it's been lower, though. It has. We're, we're conservative in those estimates, and, and you know, we under-promise and over-deliver in almost all cases in that regard. But I, but I think the suggestion this year, because of that wrinkle, and, and Tom, I think, at least in prior documents, we do expect the reval of the residential side to be significant. I mean, it's not a small number. No, uh, it's I mean, not. it's going to be in the hundreds of millions. So it, 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 it has an impact. Right. So I think this year, because of that, and if we don't want to confuse our constituents, I think we need to focus on another metric that can say, this is what we expect to deliver. And if we don't deliver that, what are the reasons why we're not doing that? And we can articulate it. I'm, I'm not lobbying for any particular metric tonight, but I'm just saying it's something we should think about and try to nail down by the next joint meeting. And the yeah. town council will be working, and the finance committee of the town council will be working on our own piece. But it's just a thought for us to put on the table that the way we've looked at it in prior years and, and this year, it sounds like, I mean, I don't think I've seen 10 positions in the municipal budget in a long time. So that's a, that's a big, I mean, that's... But Peter, to be fair, I'm almost always confronted with double-digit requests. You just don't see them. So, uh, well, I, I, understand, I understand. I'm just hiding you from the fruit. <laughs> okay. All right. Transparency hurts. Okay. So there's nothing unique and different about that. So I don't okay. But just... So I, I just think we need to, you know, do that work, so, as Don suggests, that there's real clear... Metrics that we're using that are fair and reasonable, and we can talk about. Yeah, well, at the very least, around trying. this table, everyone needs to understand what is that target, what's yeah, the absolutely. expectation, would, and then we need to communicate it. I would yeah. ask that it becomes the third bullet right here on the goals Great. sheet, so that way it's clearly documented. Well. Remind me, has that been a joint process to establish that target, or is that then top down for the council yeah, establishing that? that? My recollection is it's typically a town finance committee directive yeah. given to me and to the school department. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I mean, That's how it's question. been, but it's a whole new world. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> it's true. So my sense is we're going to hear about it anyway when we, you know, comes to ten. My sense is we'll, you know, be hearing uh, about the needs loud and clear. Um, you know, building on the point that uh, Julie suggested about adding that as a goal and be clear of the methodology, but, you know, we're talking about the, there are opportunities here, assuming there will be some flexibility in addition to addressing unmet needs that people have talked about. You know, I really think this is an excellent discussion and analysis and, um, you know, in the, uh, the comprehensive report from the last fiscal year. But they talked about the fund balance and the chance to kind of build that up to a certain level. And there are typically five things if you, if we get that number, you know, above a certain figure. <coughs> I guess 10% was the goal. We had a 10% <coughs> of the operating budget. There's a lot of things on there that go something like offset unfunded liabilities, use it in, uh, for future budget cycles to stabilize property tax rate, um, fund future capital expenditures or projects. And Peter mentioned some things we're doing, you know, on the town side there, the town council side, uh, retirement of debt, and finally, uh, taxpayer refund was, well, you know, number five on the list of those five the other things, things you could do. The other thing that... <clears throat> The town council finance committee has recognized too is we have a ton of unrecorded or unfunded liabilities for pe for pension, right, Tom? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so part of our thought was if we ever do get in that place where we have excess cash yeah. to start funding those liabilities, because we think at some point in time that's going to yeah. be a mandate right. that you ta municipalities start to have to fund right. pension liabilities. Right. GASB requirement yeah. of uh, yeah. other post employment. We're now starting, we have to report it, so the time is around the corner probably. Yeah, because so now, now, now the accounts are. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot of competing. So that's, I think that makes this year a little more complex because we do have the revalve. That's going to generate some additional potential revenue. How do we want to use that revenue as a town? What's the right mix of the things that you just read, the unmet needs? So I think it just behooves this group as an agenda item is... You know, how how are we going to vector to that? So is it the intent to have this group uh, <clears throat> finalize that budget target, or is it a town finance function? And I ask that just because the sooner we can get that guidance, the better. Right. Um, well, I think I think we when is our next? You know, that's for our work to do. 
the, the finance committee to do that and at least come up with what a recommendation and see if that resonates here. And socialize with this group. Yeah. Their next meeting is the 13th of March. This, this, this group. The joint group. Right, but presumably you guys would meet before that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sometime in the next couple of weeks. I yeah. think so. Yeah. So having, you know, been the first time sort of involved in this, can you guys give me some background where that 3% came from and why we're so, been so stuck on that number historically? Um, not sure where it came from originally. I think at some point in time, I mean, the questions we've always have gotten is, you know, especially back in the years when people's wages were flat or increasing one or two percent and CPI was one or two percent. Um, we got a lot of pushback, as you know, from the prior budget cycles about why, you know, why is a town going up more than that? Because it's actually more of an increase than the three percent because we, we have the revenue growth too. Um, we did some work. We, you know, there was some ev there's, there's information that shows municipalities are in schools are different than you know the, the general you know labor market. So we arrived at three percent as being a reasonable instead of the one or two. We built in an extra recognition of it's a, it's a different animal, and that's and that's where we've been. That's where we've tried to target. That's where we've successfully. I think our average tax increases over the last couple of years have been under three yeah. percent. Yeah, less than two and a half percent on average. Tax. So it seemed to be one something that we did socialize with our community, and they seemed to be accepting, maybe not happily, but accepting. Um, so that's sort of where it came from. It may not be appropriate this year. I mean, that's why the conversation has to take place about what seemed to work in prior years, and I think Tom has done this for us. If if it's at 3%, what is it we don't do? What then we can say, we can't we can't live without that. But it's also a way, I mean, I think one year we did it, we didn't do beach cleanings on Scarborough Beach, and we pretty quickly learned that that was not a really sound decision. So mm -hmm. we did not call. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, not sure about that. So I think the other thing was just a, there's no scientific data for it, but a, a, a feeling that that was the upper limit of acceptability, that anything below that people might not like, but they right. can kind of understand. And we've had some conversation given our reception at the polls, uh, whether or not that assumption is correct, whether that should be something else. Uh, but I, from my part, from part of the conversations, it was just a recognition that that's kind of the upper limit of what people could live with without storming town hall. So what you were saying, Tom, was that 3% was the tax rate, not spending. So we're saying, what about yes. this 3%, which is the increase in your tax? Yes. But we won't know the reval, so therefore we don't know the increased tax rate. So we never know the, re we never know the town but value. We'll model that and, and, get, and be conservative in that and, okay. and, and be able to get some comfort around that number. But it's important for us to articulate what is the target, uh, because those are, those, are, those are different, for mm -hmm. sure. And I guess the other thing I would add is <coughs> I'll pitch for uh, um, factoring in the value somehow in that equation I think is important. In a growth community, we can't possibly be, we're asked to do more next year than we are this year just by virtue of our, our growing community. And so I think it only stands to reason that some of that new value that comes in as a result of development um, goes to fund some of those new services. Well, it, does, it does, though, Tom. I mean that every year in the past practice, any new development goes into the appraised value. All of that. That's why, when the mill rate is three, if the tax rate increases three percent. Expenditures actually have gone up four to five percent. Right. And that's so what that's shown. Right. And so, so we have percent. factored in as we grow and we get more revenue from commercial and residential properties that come online. Mm -hmm. That revenue is flowing directly to offset services. What's different this year is we're not bringing. The reval isn't bringing any new property on. You're just saying the existing properties are worth a lot more. So what people really see, they're going to be impacted two ways. Someone that's had a 20, you, you said our town is about 80% of the appraised value. So some people are going to see a 20% increase in their assessed value. Mm -hmm. And then if the tax rate goes up, you know, you know 3 or 4%, you're going to see some people seeing a 23, 24% increase in their tax rate. That we just need to be sensitive to that. I mean, just like when we did the commercial reval, we had some businesses that had increases of 30 or 40 percent in their taxes, which is a big bump in, in one year. And so, 
I, I just think we need to be casual. We can't take all of the commercial, the reval. It's not new growth. It's not new development. It's the same house Understood. consuming Understood. the same services. Yeah. So those shouldn't count yeah. as new dollars to spend. Yeah, I, w I was responding to Sarah's question about how historically where the uh, what the rationale that reval is is a different animal. It is a different animal. Yes. And we just we need to collectively decide what's the best how to treat that new animal that's it's yeah. different this year. Right. So we just need to think about it. That's all. Well, co collect so, you said collectively, but I, I understood you saying that's a town finance decision well, to make. I mean, but it's one town, one budget sort of concept is what we've adopted. So what people are going to, so, uh, you know, again, once in the past when we have set whatever the town council has set, we've come back and talked about it here. And then we, you guys submit, when the Board of Education and Julie submit their budget, that was a guideline that was sort of there. It's not always come in at that. So do you want to hear what we say too, or? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean uh, the thought is. That is the discussion we're going to have? I, I think, you know. And I can't speak for Sean. My thought would be, we need, we'll do the work as a town council that we need to do so we can get clear direction to Tom. Mm -hmm. And then we will share that and we can have a conversation and, and it's up to you guys whether you think that's reasonable or not. But just be aware that when the budgets all get aggregated up, it still has to be approved by taxpayer. Right. And, that, and that's all we're trying to do is, if you guys are to do something different, then there has to be a sort of rationale. But the, but, the, but the intent of this group was to really say, at least, you know, how do we share our thinking? How do we have that conversation? How do we listen to each other and see we're all on the same page? I think, I think one the of the unique would be. things about a school budget is that we don't have, schools don't have the opportunity to generate revenue. Right. The right. only revenue we, source of revenue we have is what comes from the state in terms of our, in terms of our general purpose aid or from the federal government in terms of entitlement. <clears throat> Um, and given the success of our community, we are a minimum receiver school district. Mm -hmm. So I think that that also <coughs> has to be taken into the formula yep. and how we're calculating um, how we support our schools. And although there's much more money going into the education formula, if you saw a lot of it's already earmarked for pre-K, which is not something that we're um, exploring in FY20 here in Scarborough, mostly because of our space limitations. Mm -hmm. So there will be... So it's you and Sean and Don on the town finance, is that right? Well, I mean, our, our normal process is usually we're going to, on the 25th, have the whole town council convene mm -hmm. to really talk about goals for ourselves, which will be part of that process is this conversation. Mm -hmm. Then it kind of comes to the finance to, you know, have, you know, kind of build on that. And then, so, so we'll have clarity on the 25th. Be gonna be, everything's going to be crystal clear. Yeah, it's going to be crystal clear. <laughs> yeah, right. I, like, I think all the answers will be. Yeah, this is a lot of one goal time. Yeah. is for our next. So you guys will go at, go away and come back and, and make that proposal. Okay. But likewise, we'll do the same and have conversations with yeah. Julie and Kate. And then I think our goal should be to agree on what that target is and how yeah. we go about that. At the the third Good. Next meeting. Yep, yeah, that's great. Okay, okay with that. Yep. And obviously, we'll chat with Sean about this too. But. Yeah, I was going to say it sounded from the outside, kind of watching the exchange, that you sa it seemed like it was going to be more collaborative, but we're going to do it the same way we always have. That's what I was hearing. And I think <laughs> I feel like that's what Alicia <laughs> was hearing, too. Wait, wait so, a minute. Not that I'm disagreeing with anything you're saying, Peter, yeah. but I think Sarah just summed that up nicely because I can see why you wanted we're, a couple. We're on the same way. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Anything else on that? You look like you have something to say. Well, yeah, thank you, because I'm not really on this committee, but thank you for letting me sit in and listen to the conversation. Um, I haven't been invited to the table before like this in the past, so it's, <coughs> I think that in and of itself is nice. Um, but I, I just want to echo what Paul said, and I want to be mindful, because I do think it is a new, a new world and a new, a new way of trying to do business, um, and, and why not entertain the idea of coming up with that goal collectively, truly collectively and inclusively. Um, just because we've always done something one way doesn't mean we should continue to always do it that way. And um, I think, you know, trying to figure out that conversation, as difficult as it might be, yeah. uh, is truly the way you get, again, people to buy into that one budget, one town, one budget piece. And, and you come 
at the community re truly united <coughs> versus <coughs> this is what we're saying. This is what our goal is, and it was it, given to us by town council. You can just say it. <laughs> well, yes, and I don't. I'm not. I don't necessarily agree with that or like that. It's been that has never felt right or good for me. Again, I've never been invited to even sit at this table, um, and I tried. So. Um, Anyway, just for what it's worth, that's my two cents. Probably ten. Find more than you want. Uh, regardless of who sets the, the target, the sooner we can get it, the better. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm totally having heart <laughs> palpitations thinking about getting guidance on March 13th when we have to deliver a budget two weeks later. Yeah. So that was what I was going to ask. Do we need to move <coughs> that meeting up? Yes. I, yeah, I don't right think now. we can wait a month for that sort of guidance. Okay. So I'm not going to attempt to suggest a time without Sean here because he seems to have the craziest calendar of us all. But why don't you give me? I'll take that as an action. Well, when do you need it by? <clears throat> Today. Yes, yeah, right. that, as soon as you can, really. Yes. And I, I don't mean to be so, dramatic. But, but I guess uh, Peter, we're we're in full budget formation mode. So. When do you guys have your meeting? Well, we're not getting together as a town council till the 25th, right? So three days. Oh, I was expecting that would be when we get it. Yes. At the team building. It's team this, building, yeah. The 25th that's, is a Monday? Yeah. February 25th? Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. That's, yeah. in the past, that's where the, at least the goals were set. At the team building event? Yeah, at, at okay. that. At that. Is yeah. that an all day thing or an evening thing? Three hours. Five, five to eight. Three hours. Five to eight. eight. Yeah. <clears throat> it has been nearly impossible to find that date. So. <laughs> that's not bad. We're not changing it. We're, change. change. we're not changing it. Yeah. Okay. But if we did something that week, like the Wednesday after that. Yeah. Yeah, I know Sean can't do Tuesdays short, or Thursdays, but I know that Wednesday after potentially. I'll just go on a tangent, yeah. but are the, are the dates that are on that calendar right now, I think they're all things that we've already used. They're like a couple of things and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> oh my God. So if those are, if those are kind of set and we're just trying to <coughs> maneuver in the midst of them. Both sides. Just add on the back. Yeah. Because Colette was asking yeah. me if those are like ready to be booked to them. Yeah. Yeah. If so we could meet on the 27th, that would be very helpful. Okay. Is that work for you? Sure. You can't do anything before 5.30, is that right? Me? Uh, I, I can make things work. Okay. 5.30 would be great for me. I have a meeting with the SEA till 5. So you guys are going to make me miss my cornhole playoffs. Oh, it's so disappointing. <laughs> Actually, I won't, be, Anything for the I won't budget. be here, so I'll sub in for you. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's before four. You can do it before four. Okay. So that could be a single item agenda, right? I mean, for so far, focus on that. Yeah. So it doesn't need to be a, a two hour meeting of, necessarily. Yeah. So let me check with Sean. I'll text him after this and, and see if he can block that off. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at February 27th. February 27th. Alicia, you know if that works for you? Well, if we're talking about after work hours, I know that it works for me. I know who's on the school board, but can you tell me who's a, uh, what group of people comprise the leadership council? The leadership council consists of all of the central office administrators, all of the principals, assistant principals, um, and all directors and assistant directors. So there's about 22 of us Great. in total, 23 Great. county. Great. Thanks. So the second to last thing we had on the agenda was to review the calendar. Um, I have some highlights, highlighted dates up there. Uh, I also have copies of it. I don't know if it's worth, if you guys have questions, if you want to go through it line by line, or if you'd rather end early. I think, Kate, is there anything? Well, I, I think my wonder was, are we all committed to the dates that are already on there? So I think that we've just come up with a, like, public meetings, the flow of that is it needs to proceed to the referendum, so yeah. I don't have any particular needs beyond that. The one thing I would add is the first and second um, Leadership Council school board meetings, we also encourage town councilors to attend those if you're yeah. able. And so we're, usually this is a, a long, full day um, event. We've decided to break it into two smaller chunks, so it's 8.30 to 11.30. On, on April first, 2nd, on April 2nd. And, April 2nd. and then 4 till 7. It's 7. Uh, yeah, 6 30. Can we add those two? Can you get me a from school? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I could connect a few standards for okay. it. 
They're just mis- they're, they're not shaded. They're right. shaded. Okay. Right. That's not a holiday, is it? This mm-hmm. We're just going to have to do And your town council workshop is not here as well, and probably should be. Right. Yeah. It's the yeah, 20th. I can ask Colette if she would so share what she has. All right. Let's collaborate tomorrow. We can, okay. we can yeah. get this tuned up. Okay. Any other comments on the calendar? So you're going to add the 27th, I assume? Yep. Yeah. Or not, yeah. yeah. So well, we, yeah assuming we, Sean just can do if it. Sean's available. So we've got a, a, a finance committee, town council finance committee meeting on the 27th from 5 30 to 7 30. So you're just talking about having this joint meeting after that, right after that? Oh. There's already four together? Uh, or we could do the first. First, then we can carry on over First few minutes hour. to do that, to just agree on the goal. Sorry, you have a, we they have, have a, a town council finance, finance, that night. Oh. finance, finance meeting. Finance committee. Oh, okay. Town council finance committee meeting <coughs> uh, that night. Anyway, but, you know, we could, we just I'm sure we could just go on Make before that the first agenda that item and then carry on with your other business. That would be a good idea. Any public comments? John Kochi, uh, thanks for doing this. Uh, I've been doing a lot of research on uh, what we spend uh, for our schools versus what some of the other districts in the state spend. And I just wanted to comment that historically we spend less, in some cases significantly less, than all of our peers. So those are districts that have similar demographics to us. They have similar standards of living. Um, and that's both when you uh, look at it by how much we spend per student and how much we spend per teacher. Um, the other thing I, uh, that I was surprised at that I found was that we received significantly less funding than our peers from the state. So I, I think we received around 4 or 5% of our funding in 2017 from the state. Our, the average for our peer group, which is um, five different districts uh, like Falmouth and Cumberland and Freeport, um, Kennebunk, uh, their average was almost 17%. So if you blow that back over eight years, that's almost $26 million that our peers have had to work with that we haven't. And I, I think that's created an inter- interesting dynamic for our town. Mm-hmm. It creates a lot of friction because we're trying to compete with these high caliber school districts and we're doing so very well. But we have significantly less funding from the state and overall we're spending less. So I, I just wanted to share that information on here. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Any other comments? Agenda something? item for next time we convene as a joint council, but not <clears throat> when we're going to piggyback on the town council's on finance 13th. meeting. Yes. Um, I would like to discuss expectations <coughs> and uh, roles at the budget outreach meetings so that we all have. <coughs> For those of us who is this is our first go round. What is it? The thirteenth of what? March. <coughs> oh, so we're keeping the March thirteenth, but we're adding the twenty seventh. Just a quick one topic. I think. Got it. Okay. Yep. Any other agenda recommendations for our next one? We have time. Do we want to talk about the budget book um, information that Larissa gathered, or? Do we feel like we, we've got that a handle on that? Well, again, I, it really shouldn't be that much different. Uh, it's just going to be uh, packaged in kind of three different ways depending on the appetite of the, the user. So I don't think you see a big difference. Uh, we'll Does it have page numbers? <laughs> Continuous page could, numbers. Please. Pagination is really important. <laughs> this is really, pagination. really important. In a table Feedback. of contents. Aggressive feedback. Continuous like, pagination. Like, All right, well, we're having it now. Okay. Continuous <laughs> pig Continuous pagination. I thought it was I love saying it. Sorry. We'll, we'll see what we can do. Okay. Good feedback. Thank you. Yep. What it means, you know what it means, right? No. All right, like, so you have section one of the budget. 
pages 1 through 25. Like and then the next section pages. has pages 1 through 25. And people, as we're <coughs> talking about the budget, people get really confused at home because they're like, oh, tab 2, uh, so page blah, blah, blah. If you have continuous pagination, page. like a creative <laughs> imagination, it's much easier for people to not get lost. Is that actually a word? I learned it, yes. And well, it we is. learned it communication. The only thing is, we're going to do it on Roman numerals. What's the word? What word is it? Pagination. Oh, yeah. Continuous oh, pagination. What did you get thing. Uh -huh. And I was what so excited. I said, who are you? I can't say it anymore. It doesn't matter. No I can't say how it works in the English language. I'll forgive you from like the same. All right, now I'm on a meeting with for the day. Oh, I have thoughts. I always watch it right now. How do you know what's in it?